it is 7.15, I'll call the meeting to order. The meeting is being recorded by NORCAM, and I am joined by my colleagues, Mr. O'Leary, Mr. Studo, Mrs. Gonzalez, and Mr. Walner. And we'll, and we'll begin with the, the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for I'm which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Gilberto, do you mind muting the attendees? And we'll unmute when we're ready to speak. Madam Chair, you should be able to unmute yourself. All right, and we also actually need Mr. Studo to unmute himself too. And our first order of business is the proclamation of Older Americans Month. And we have Mrs. Prenny who needs to unmute herself as well. And is there a proclamation? Yes. To be read. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna well, let's hear from Mrs. Prenny first, and um, we can uh, then take a vote on the proclamation. Welcome, Mrs. Prenny. Good evening, everyone. It's nice to kind of see everyone. I, I can't believe another year has passed. Uh, so this is Older Americans Month. It's been a different kind of year for a lot of older Americans in this country. So I appreciate you um, reading the proclamation tonight. Um, again, I want to, um, as I said before on a budget here, the, the older Americans are our heroes. They've done so much this year. Um, they were so reserved um, in trying to get by this COVID stuff. Uh, they're the ones most effective and, um, and they're our heroes because they're actually the ones that are already double vaccinated and trying to get out in the world. So um, hopefully good things will still happen. And I wanna thank you all for doing this tonight. Great, thank you. Mr. Studo. Yes. Um, the pro Older Americans Month 2021, a proclamation. We have to vote first and then read. Oh, then, I think okay. that's how it works. Madam Chair, I move to proclaim May 2021 as Older Americans Month in North Reading and to read the attached proclamation. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Discussion, Mr. O'Leary. Why wouldn't we? Of course, <laughs> I've got to proclaim this. Absolutely. <laughs> Mrs. Gonzalez, you're on, you're on mute. Absolutely. Mr. Walner. Uh, thank you, Mary, for bringing it forward and we're glad to support it. Mr. Studo. Yes. Yeah, and I say the same, Mrs. Prenny. This must have been one of the most difficult years for seniors to make it through. And we know how much our, how hard your staff worked with the town administrator to get messages to them, to reach out to them through phone calls, to coordinate rides, to coordinate vaccines. So this, this, this year above all, I think is, we do this every year and we're happy to do it every year, but this year above all is, is it's a great opportunity to, to recognize our seniors in our community. Absolutely. So we'll take, so we'll take a, a vote on the motion. We have a motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Ms. Mrs. Gonzalez, you said aye. I can hear. Aye. I can, aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Manu Pelli is aye. And can you read the proclamation, Mr. Studo? Yes. Older Americans Month 2021, a proclamation. Whereas North Reading includes a growing number of older Americans who have built resilience and strength over their lives through successes and difficulties, and whereas North Reading benefits from people of all ages, abilities, and backgrounds are included and encouraged to share their successes, and Reading recognizes our need to nurture ourselves, reinforce our strength, and continue to thrive in times of both joy and difficulty, and Whereas North Reading can foster communities of strength by creating opportunities to share stories and learn from each other, engaging older adults through education, recreation, and service, and encouraging people of all ages to celebrate connections and resilience. Now, therefore, we of North Reading, MA, does hereby proclaim May 2021 to be Older Americans Month. 
We urge every resident to recognize older adults and the people who support them as essential contributors to the strength of our community. Dated this 10th day of May, 2021. All right, thank yeah. you. Yes, thank right. you. I, I would just like to add one thing. Today I had the privilege of going to, or talking about older Americans and speaking and telling stories. I had the privilege of going to an event at the Hushu today that the Lees um, hosted for the Fitzmaurices. Both Walter and Lorraine Fitzmaurice, I don't know if some of you know, uh, are moving um, out of their home in North Reading after 60 years this week to a, uh, an assisted living in Rhode Island to be closer to one of their daughters. So as we all know, no one tells a story better than Walter. So um, we wish them well. And it was a privilege being there. And I want to thank Elise for hosting this event for them. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Perney. All right. Our next order of business is to sign the bans and bonds and we have Mrs. Mackey with us on that. And then Mr. Gilberto, anything you wanna add on that? Um, yes, Madam Chair, um, the, uh, the treasury's here. It was a $4.1 yes. $4 million general obligation municipal purpose bond offering. Um, for which we received four bids and she'll review the, uh, the uh, findings and um, the actions the board needs to take. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Hi, good, Hi. good evening. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening. So um, for the bonds, um, we did receive four bids um, with the lowest um, bidder at one 0.365 going to Robert W. Beard and Company. Um, and then the other, that's the, the true interest cost um, is the 1.365. The um, second bidder um, was Fidelity um, and their bid was 1.36932. And then we got Roosevelt and Cross at 1.3659. And then, sorry, I can't say it. <laughs> um, and then- um, Stifle, Nicholas. Yes, thank you. I, yes, and, um, and their bid was 1.4458. We did receive a premium. Um, our premium was after net cost was 527,707. So our actual um, amount that we are borrowing um, after they reduced everything is 3,408,000. And then plus the premium comes out to 4 million seven four million zero zero seven seven zero seven is what we're actually borrowing for. Okay. And I'm sorry. Yeah. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, did you want to um, know what the items were that we were actually going permanent with? <laughs> yes, please. Okay. So um, there's um, the water meter replacements that was um, authorized in May of 17. And um, do you want the totals on that as well? Yes, please. Okay. So that was 121,000. We're going. 500 that we're going permanent on. Um, and that, that was actually getting paid off in full with the premium. And then um, the authorized um, 6, 4 of 18, there was a water um, main um, rehab and um, replacement for $300,000. And then there was, I'm sorry, my light's really bad. <laughs> and then on 4, 8, there was a water distribution system upgrade for um, $150,000, um, six, four of 18, it was the water distribution and supply um, infrastructure, and that was 500,000. And then on 629 of 20, it was a water distribution up upgrade system for 200,000. And then on 629 of 20, it was the ex excavator replacement for $110,000. On 61019, it was the road work um, for 600,000. On 610 of 19, 
It's the DPW garage phase one for 48,300. On 610 of 19, it's the library clapboards replacement, repairs, excuse me, for 176,525,000. On 610 of 19, it was the, the DPW fabric storage replacement for $70,000. And then on 620 of 19, it was the road design and construction, the Upper Elm Street for 325,000. And um, 610 of 19, it was the dump truck replacement number one for $90,000. On 610 of 19, the dump truck replacement number two for $200,000. And then on 629 of 20, it was a town hall boiler replacement. Um, the original amount was 325,000, but we're only going permanent on 261,643. And then on six, on 10, three of 20, it was up Elm Street drainage for 550,000. And then on three, um, 10, three of 20, it was the library exterior for 130,000. Thank you. That You're was welcome. a great detailed report. We have a long, 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 long motion <clears throat> that was been prepared obviously under your recommendation as yeah. a treasurer. So we'll, okay. let's, if there's, if there's no further question question on that or any other input on that, we'll have Mr. Studo read the motion. Excuse me, Madam Chair. May I just, um, do you want me to do the bands as well? Because the bands is in the motion as well. Oh, it's, okay. It, it's all one motion. Okay. It's a so pretty did, long one, sure. Yes, yes. So um, the bands that um, we got was um, seven bids. So, um, the ban is for 5 million, 535, 577. So the, the um, NIC, which is the net uh, income cost, uh, went to Jeffers um, at 0.209, I'm sorry, I'm having a really hard time right now, 0 0.2080. And then uh, BY Mellon Capitals Market was the next bidder at 0.2195. And then um, Piper's Jeffries and Company was at 0 0.2210. And Fidelity Capitals was at 0 0.2220. And then TD Securities was at 0 0.2230, 39, excuse me. And then Oppenheimer and Company was 0.2522. And then Century came in at 0.5500. Um, we did receive a premium on this as well. The premium for the ban was $71,519.86. And that the ban is for the uh, Mill Street property. That was for $659,000. And then it's the high school middle <coughs> school for uh, $4,876,577. Thank you. I don't think that was in part, that that was that part was in our packet, although it's incorporated into the motion. So I appreciate the detail on that. Um, any anything else to add to that, Mr. Gilberto? Um, All set. The oh. only thing I will just add is that the uh, rating agencies uh, we had a rating call in April, and they did affirm our bond rating of A A two, um, uh, as well as our rating for the short term debt at uh, M I G. Um, one as well. So um, just the note for the, for the community, they said it reflected our long-term <clears throat> credit quality, um, our moderate size tax base with above average resident wealth and incomes, an adequate financial position and manageable long-term liabilities, including debt, debt, pension, and OPEP. So that was certainly good news. Okay. All right. So and if the, are there any questions? Any questions of the of my colleagues, Mr. O'Leary? Yeah, just briefly on the uh, Mill Street property. This is what a short-term borrowing. So that uh, should we probably effectuate um, the ability to sell the property, can we earmark those funds to pay off the note, or will we continue to? How will that work? Madam Chair, may I? Yes, please. Yes. Um, yes, yeah, so that um, the ban is only out for one year. 
right. so we didn't we didn't go permanent with it because we we knew that we were in the, trying to sell off um, a portion of that land, so we didn't want to go permanent with that. That's why we only went with a ban. And if we do sell it, we can pay off the ban when it comes due um, next May. The ban um, comes due a year from now, May twenty seventh, I believe, of uh, twenty twenty two. And then is it is it our intention, maybe it's to, to the finance director, that that's what we would be doing, specifically earmarking the proceeds to pay off that specific ban, or is it just going to be rolled in with, with everything else? This is Ms. Ms. Rock. Through you, Madam Chair, to you, Select Board Member O'Leary, um, that is the intent. That's why we've carried it on a ban. Uh, if we had gone long term on it and um, had it bonded, we would not be able to use the proceeds to, to take care of that. So whatever the proceeds are from the sale, we can put towards the ban. Um, we, I just want to note we have been paying down um, on the ban because we've had it outstanding. Um, so we, that is coming from the Water Enterprise um, Department's budget. Perfect, thank you. All right, so any other questions? Well, good, we have to give Vincenzo Studo about five minutes to read the motion. Mr. Okay. Studo. <laughs> Madam Chair, I move that the board vote as follows, that the sale of the 3,480,000 general obligation municipal purpose loan of 2021 bonds of the town dated May 27th, 2021 to Robert W. Baird and Co. Inc at the price of $4,007,707.86 in accrued interest is hereby approved and confirmed. The bond shall be payable on May 15th of the years and the principal amounts and bear interest at the respective rates as follows. <clears throat> okay. I'm just gonna go across without saying year amount interest rate every time, if that's okay. Uh, 2022, 205,000, 5%. 2023, 280,000, 5%. 2024, 275,000, 5%. 2025, 275,000, 5%. 2026, 265,000, 5%. 2029, 250,000, 5%. 2030, 250,000, 5%. 2031, 200,000, wow, 4%. 2034, 280,000, 2%. 2037, 265,000, 2%. 2041, 340,000, 2%. Further voted that the bonds maturing on May 15, 2034, May 15, 2037, and May 15, 2041 shall be subject to mandatory redemption or mature, mature as follows. Term, due, term bond due 2015, 2034, year 2032, 95,000, 2033, 95,000, 2034, 90,000. Term bond due May 15, 2037, year 2035, 90,000, 2036, 90,000, 2037, 85,000. Term due, term bond due May 15, 2041. Year 2038, 85,000. 2039, 85,000. 2040, 85,000. 2041, 85,000. Further voted to approve the sale of a 5,535,577 one and a half percent general obligation bond anticipation note of the town dated May 27, 2021 and payable May 27, 2022 to Jeffries LLC at par and accrued interest plus a premium of 71,519.66. Further voted that in connection with the marketing and sale of the bonds, the preparation and distribution of a notice of sale and preliminary official statement dated April 2022, 2021 and a final official Statement dated May 5th, 2021, each in such form as may be approved by the town treasurer, be and hereby are ratified, confirmed, approved, and adopted. Wow. Further voted 
that in connection with the marketing and sale of the notes, the preparation and distribution of a notice of sale and preliminary official statement dated April 2020, 20, April 22nd, 2021, and a final official statement dated May 5th, 2021, in each such form as may have be approved by the town treasurer, be in hereby are ratified, confirmed, approved, and adopted. <laughs> Further voted that the bonds shall be subject to redemption at the option of the town upon such terms and conditions as are set forth in the official statement. Further voted that the town treasurer and the select board be and hereby are authorized to execute and deliver continuing and significant events disclosure under takings in a compliance with SEC Rule 15C2-12 and such forms as may be approved by the bond council to the town, which undertake things shall be incorporated by reference in the bonds and notes as applicable for the benefit of the holders of the bonds and notes from time to time. Further voted that we authorize and direct the town treasurer to establish post issuance federal tax compliance procedures and continuing disclosure procedures in such forms as the town treasurer and bond council deem sufficient or if such procedures are currently in place to review and update said procedures in order to monitor and maintain the tax exempt status of the bonds and notes and to comply with relevant securities laws. Further voted that any certificates or documents relating to the bonds and the notes may be executed in several counter parts each of which shall be regarded as the original and of all which shall constitute one and the same document. Delivery of an executed counterpart of a signature page to document by electronic mail in a PDF file or by other electronic transmission shall be as effective as delivery of a manually effective counterpart signature page to such document. And electronic signatures on any of these documents shall be deemed original signatures for the purposes of the documents and all of matters relating thereof to having the same legal effect as original signatures. For the voted that each member of the select board, the town clerk and the town treasurer be and hereby are authorized to take any and all such actions and execute and deliver such certificates, receipts or other documents as may be determined by them or any of them to be necessary or convenient to carry into effect the provisions of the foregoing votes. I will second that. Well done. Thank you. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Mr. O'Leary? Any nope. discussion? No, thank you. Mrs. Gonzalez, any discussion? <clears throat> Mr. Walner, any discussion? Mr. Studo, any discussion? I don't have any breath left to discuss. All right. So we'll take put that to a vote. <laughs> Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Ms. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. And Manu Pelli is aye. All right. Moving on to our next order of business. It's to Madam review. Madam Chair, can I just um, say one more thing? Oh, I'm sorry. Sure. Uh, I'm flip, flipping back and forth between the the paperwork and the and the Zoom call, so I apologize. No, no, Please, that's okay. Ahead. I just wanted to let you know that they will be in DocuSign um, tomorrow. We will put them in Docu. I, we will put them in DocuSign. Um, it might come in. Uh, it might not be under uh, the town administrator's DocuSign. So just be aware of that. Great. Thank you for okay. the reminder. Also, thank you for the presentation. Thank with all you. the detail that you gave us. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a nice night. You too. Thank you. All right. So our next order of business is to review the updated fiscal year 2022 revenue and expense and an expense plan and the municipal budget recommendations and to vote the fiscal year 2022 budget recommendations. And for this, we have Ms. Rourke to start out, probably share her screen. And you're muted. Yes, um, Madam Chair, if I may share my screen. Sure. Is that view okay, Madam Chair? Sure. 
Can everyone see that to my colleagues all set? Good, okay. Okay, so quickly um, at our April 26 meeting, we reviewed uh, the revenue plan for FY22. There have been a few changes uh, that have taken place since April 26 to uh, Friday, last Friday, May 7th, uh, I believe, or May 5th, whenever we had a financial planning meeting. And um, as the treasurer collector just reviewed with you the bands and the bonds, um, they were just sold and we received the updated debt schedules. So there needed to be a few changes in regards to some projects um, that we had borrowed for and our debt service for non-exempt debt needed to be updated. So those are really the areas that needed to be adjusted and were reviewed at financial planning. So it will be a very quick update on this. Um, so as I mentioned, um, there was an increase in our non-exempt debt service. So we needed to uh, find a way without harming the schools or the municipal's operating budgets uh, as they had been balanced. So we were able to um, increase the transfer from the debt capital stabilization fund by $141,723. And we can only increase the transfer from this fund in the amount that our total debt service is. And that's non-exempt debt service and short-term debt that does not include exempt debt service. So we, this was the maximum increase that we could go to. We had already been carrying 1.2 million. Now we've gone to 1.3. And I'll show that to you in the next slide. We were able to decrease um, the snow and ice uh, deficit amount that we carried uh, in the revenue plan under the fixed costs. We were carrying 325,000. We reduced that by 85,000. And also, as I mentioned, the increase in non-exempt debt service for this current borrowing that you're going to sign the bonds and the bans for increased $226,751. Quick snapshot, um, we reviewed this uh, in April, we've reviewed it several times. There have not been any changes to this slide for taxes or for uh, local aid at, at this time. We don't have the you know final governor's budget, but we're, we're going with uh, good, good assumptions. Um, and there have been no other updates on, on this slide. The next slide uh, under local receipts and other financing sources. Um, so motor vehicle excise has not changed, but I continue to caution us on our um, estimate for motor vehicle excise of uh, 2,550. And I just want us all to be aware of this. We are being um, much less conservative for FY22 than we were for FY21. So I want to just note that um, and have everybody be aware of that. And also on financing sources, um, as I mentioned, the transfer from the debt service stabilization fund um, was budgeted at 1,200 and it's been increased to 1,341. And you can also see it here, um, we had added, uh, a line item for the ARPA funds that are federal funding that are coming soon, but we have not allocated any of those towards uh, the operating budgets at this time. We are still awaiting guidance um, on those funds. As I mentioned, under expenses, debt service not exempt um, increased by 226,000. And I just highlight the three um, non-exempt debt service items. So we have non-exempt debt, then we have the little school roof, which is non-exempt debt, and it's just separated um, for capital improvement planning purposes. And then we have short-term um, debt, which is ban interest. So those three are what total um, for debt service. Um, 
non-exempt debt service. And then, as I mentioned, snow and ice deficit, we had been carrying 325,000. We reduced that by approximately 85,000. So um, the remaining snow and ice deficit will be funded with free cash. And we will see that and discuss that during um, the discussion on the FY22 June town meeting warrant articles. Just two other areas of caution that I've discussed previously is health insurance. So the participating funding arrangement and the health insurance contingency line, as well as municipal and school health insurance uh, line items, they are very tight for FY22. We trued up the budget and we left very little wiggle room um, in those line items. So I just want everybody to be aware of that in case, you know, um, there are multiple life events that take place amongst our employees in the coming fiscal year, um, or we add new positions, whatever, whatever may happen. I just want everybody to be aware those are very tight uh, figures in order for us to be able to balance this budget. Um, and as reviewed on April 26th, um, we discussed that we were going to fund DPW small capital with free cash, fund the fire department recruit training uh, overtime costs with free cash, and that will be held within the salary pool outside of the fire department's operating budget. We also will fund um, school one-time costs um, in the amount of $75,000 with free cash, as well as school small capital items of $10,000 with, with free cash. And that's the update on the revenue plan. Um, I don't know if we wanna stop and have questions now, Madam Chair. Oh, yes, or, that'd be great. Um, Let's just see if any of the, my colleagues have any questions. Any questions, Mr. O'Leary? Not at this time, thank you. Mrs. Gonzalez? No, thank you. Mr. Walner? No questions, thank you. Mr. Studo? No, we're all set. Okay. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, to the town administrator, is it okay to proceed? Oh, of course, right, Mr. Mr. Gilberto? It is, but Madam Chair, what I would just say as we transition to the next part of the discussion is, you know, you clearly can see our, our debt service numbers went up. You know, we came up with a plan that, you know, we are, um, you know, that, 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 that stretches a bit of our resources and our reliance on free cash um, in order to preserve things to the extent that we can. Um, it did affect our approach in terms of recommending the timing on um, some of the recommendations for the budget um, for FY22. And I believe the finance director is going to go go through that um, at this point in time. Okay, I missed this one. So on April 26, we reviewed the municipal operating budget, and we reviewed it um, without the two items uh, that I just uh, mentioned being funded by free cash, which is the DPW small capital in the amount of $144,600. And then the fire department recruit training overtime in the amount of 119,331. And those items now you will see have been added back. We need to add those back in as the part of the operating budget. And they'll be listed in the omnibus warrant article. Uh, the funding source listed underneath those items will be free cash. So they, you'll see a larger number on here, but don't be alarmed. It just includes those, those two items. There also um, is uh, another shift um, of a position to the salary pool for the time being. And so that has been moved and I, I'll, I will review that, so. And it's very small again, so I, I'm sorry, um, but I will make sure that everybody um, receives a copy of this and we can put the presentation on the, the town's website as well. And some reading glasses with that. <laughs> All right, any so, questions? And, and, oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Rocky, please. I just wanted to note um, the one change that I mentioned or the three changes I mentioned one is that um, DPW small capital, you'll see back added in here. Um, and 
then the fire department recruit training overtime um, has been added to the salary pool as well as the um, assistant director position from youth services in the amount of $25,000. So we have added to the salary pool 119331 dollars and $25,000. So it's just a, a shift up from youth services for the time being and, and also a shift um, that we had taken out that position, the overtime from the fire department's budget. And we've now added it with free cash into the salary pool. And I'll let the town administrator speak to some of our shifts. Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Liz, um, for putting this information up there. Um, you know, as the finance director described, uh, you know, our, our recommendation at this point is, you know, we have, we have some, you know, we, we have this combination of having stretched our resources a bit further going into FY22 in order to sustain what we have and to restore the items that ended up being cut mid-year in fiscal year 2020, um, namely the project manager grant writer position, the clerical assistance for the veteran services office, um, the position in um, the treasurer collector's office, you know, those are, were and have been the priorities. I think we were hopeful that we would be able to take steps in the direction of um, funding um, the assistant uh, youth services director position. We're recommending that we put that funding into the salary pool while, while we see how the reliance on the federal funding plays out. And while we also await an answer on the youth substance abuse uh, grant um, as well, which is pending. Um, and Liz, I believe the salary for the youth substance abuse grant coordinator is also gonna be in the salary pool. It is, yes. Um, so where, where we basically end up at is restoring the positions that were funded as part of the FY 2020 budget, um, but um, for which we had to make decisions mid-year either not to fill them um, or to hold them vacant. Um, but not to, to proceed with any further um, additions at this point in time. Um, and the one thing I will note is um, that we know the recreation um, enterprise is in, in a tough spot right now. They asked for an increase in subsidy. We are recommending that. Uh, I do believe that that's something that may be a candidate for um, one-time reliance on federal funding if we choose that that is appropriate. And we do expect that their revenues are going to rebound and it could be as soon as this summer. Um, but they, they really won't know that until they get through the spring season. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, let's see if there's any questions of uh, my colleagues. Mr. O'Leary, any questions? All set. Mrs. Gonzalez, any questions? Mr. Walner, questions? I'm good. I'm good, thanks. Mr. Studo, questions? And so we, we do have a motion. Is there anything else that you wanted to add, Ms. Roar, from Mr. Gilberto? We, I know we do have a motion to vote to approve the budget recommendations next. Yes, so I just want to add, Madam Chair, um, the motion for the total FY22 budget is not in the packet yet, but you can vote to recommend the, you know, the, the municipal operating budget. And then after the budget hearing, there will be a motion for the total overall budget. Okay, so we'd be taking a motion right now to approve the, the recommended municipal operating budget. Madam Do I, okay, Mr. Gilbert. I'm sorry, I, I failed to identify one other matter that I know has been um, up for some discussion via email and some of the public meetings, which is with regard to the, the trash fee. And I know that there's been some questions that have been raised and I, I do want the board members, the residents who have expressed um, an interest in the matter and the community as a whole to know that we are looking you know, further at the structure of the, um, the trash program and the way we finance it. Um, we you know we've been given some some information from the Department of Revenue and we're reviewing that with town council. Um, you know, if there needs to be any sort of adjustment, which I, I'm not certain that that will be the case at this point in time, we'll recommend that at a later time and whether that occurs, um, you know, as a an amendment to a motion on the budget um, or in some other form, the board can decide at that point. But right now we're recommending the budget as it's been discussed since the Saturday um, budget hearing and uh, reflecting the uh, the trash fee. Um, that was voted by the board a few weeks ago as well. But I, I do want the board to know that we are we are looking into that matter, but we do we just don't have any firm you know um, modification to re to recommend at this point in time. And we're not certain that one will be required either. Mr. Gilberto, on that um, 
on that issue. I just wanted to, just for the, the individuals that are attending, I just wanted to ask you or Ms. Rook a couple of questions with regard to how we account for the trash can, how we spend it. In, in a general sense, when we get revenue in, there's a split between the, the total receipts between the school for school operating costs and the town. And generally speaking, that's in the 60, 40 or 60, some, 60 plus 30 plus range annually. I'm, I'm giving you vagaries, but we can get, we can provide. But how we account for the trash fee is we, we had separated that out as a separate, um, I would say enterprise fund. If I'm not saying it right, you can correct me. And that dollar for dollar goes completely toward the cost of the trash program. We don't give any of those revenues over to the school for use in its operating budget. Is that right? That's correct. And that, that, that's a, that, that is how we are now budgeting. Okay, so when we parse out the trash fee, it's, 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 a, it's part of the fee collected, but we're not identifying it the way we voted that fund. We're not accepting it in and identifying it as revenue to the town because it's going towards that expense. So the school doesn't share in that uh, any portion of that as part of its operating budget. That's correct. Right. All right, does anyone else have any other question before we take a motion on this? Um, yeah, I have a question. I, Mr. Tudo. Uh, it says here, we're talking about for the for what uh, Ms. Rourke just discussed, motion will be available on Monday. I don't have it. So what our vote, for, as what Ms. Rourke just explained, our vote is going to be, so we have this recommended budget before okay. us that, that we've just received and reviewed with the changes. This is slightly varied from the last recommended budget that Ms. Rourke presented to us. So what, as a board, we need to do before we go into the public hearing on this is vote to vote on a recommendation to um, approve the uh, you know, recommended operating budget, essentially. Well, to recommend the, uh, the amended operating budget or recommended operating Madam budget? Chair, yes. Uh, I believe the finance director's intent is that the motion would be that the board consider to vote to um, recommend, to vote, vote to approve, approve the town administrator's recommended FY22 budget. That's typically how it comes across. Yes. yes. So, so that's the motion. We'll just use your words and say it was made by Mr. Studo. <laughs> All right, motion to, appro motion to approve the town administrator's recommended budget by Mr. Studo. Second. And seconded by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. And Ms. Manupelli is aye. All right, so we're hang having you hang in there because our next order of business is the public, the public hearing on the budget. So let me just get to that notice. I'm gonna just read the notice of hearing to the town of North Reading, notice of fiscal year 2022 budget informational hearing. The North Reading Select Board does hereby notify the residents of the town of North Reading that an informational <coughs> hearing on the fiscal year 2022 budget anticipated to be considered at the June annual town meeting will be held virtually Monday, May 10th, 2021, 7.15 p.m. I'm only slightly off on that one. Interested residents will be given the opportunity to be heard and may participate as follows. And the publication includes the Zoom meeting link, meeting ID, mobile phone numbers, dial by, by location numbers, meeting ID, and um, you know web Zoom link by the select board posted 5-6 of 2021. So we will open the, open the, Fiscal Year 2022 Operating Budget Informational Hearing. And see if anyone who is attending has any questions, comments. 
And if you do, if you could please raise your hand or put a comment in the chat room. And I see none, Mr. Gilberto. I, uh, I'm not seeing any, any hands raised either physically or, or virtually. Okay. And Madam Chair, I will note that we normally have a presentation we go through at this hearing. I, I do think we've gone through the details a number of times over the past few weeks. So mm -hmm. I know the finance director was prepared to present information. I'm just not sure that it's necessary at this point. Is just shaking her head. Um, and if there are no comments with regard to this and no questions, and we just actually had that public really information, informational explanation, um, I'll close the, close the public hearing on the, close the public informational hearing and we'll move on to the next order of business which is to receive the recommendations of the Capital Improvement Planning Committee um, and review and approve the fiscal year 2022 Capital Improvement Plan, which we have Mrs. Hurlbut, Mr. Kelleher, and probably others from the, from the planning, Capital Improvement Planning Committee. So Mr. Kelleher, who's, our, who's the chair, why don't we call on you? to speak to this one. Okay, I think uh, Ms. Rourke has her hand up if you want to. Oh, I'm sorry, I, Ms. Rourke. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, it just, I wanted to speak before uh, Mr. Kelleher discussed the capital plan. So okay. we've had some um, new occurrences or new items that have come about um, as late of this afternoon. Uh, so there will be some um, one item added to general government capital items and that will need a vote of the Capital Improvement Planning Committee as well as uh, some dollar amount changes to the Hillview Enterprise uh, Capital Requests. Um, they've seen some uptick in prices on some of the equipment that they had first submitted back in December. And I was notified today that those have um, increased. So there is some adjustments to what you have in your, your packet. And so when we finish Mr. Kelleher's report, or however Mr. Kelleher would like to proceed, um, I will leave that to him. But I, I will uh, share my screen and bring up those changes when, when we get to that point. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Rohr. Um, and Mr. Kelleher, you did provide the board, it was in the board's packet, you did provide a, a memo from the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. I don't know if you want that right into the record as well. It, it ought to be part of the record. I don't, I, I show, sure. it, I'll leave that up to you whether it needs to be done now or it can be done at some point. Well, let me just quickly read it if you don't mind prior to your presentation. That way we get it into the record. It's a, it's to the North Reading Select Board from the Capital Improvement Planning Committee, May 5th, 2021, regarding fiscal year 2022 capital acquisition recommendations. The Capital Improvement Planning Committee, CIPC, received 4.3 million in capital requests from school and municipal departments, 2.6 million from the water enterprise, and $195,500 from the Hillview enterprise. We are recommending funding 2.8 million of the school and municipal requests, 2.1 million in bonding, 83,000 transfer from the Capital Improvement Stabilization Fund debt fund, and 600 from free cash, including 200,000 to supplement the road programs and all of the enterprise fund requests, which will be paid by the respective funds. You will note that all the municipal and school bonding falls e into either the five or 10 year category. It is unusual for the committee to recommend any five year bonding, but the two design studies totaling 415,000 cannot be bonded for a longer period unless and until the underlying projects are approved and funded. The major items in the 10-year category are the roads project and the work on the exterior of the third meeting house in Damon Tavern. 
As a result of the necessary cutbacks to the capital program last year, there were a number of carryover items from the fiscal year 21 requests. We tried to accommodate as many of them in this recommendation as we deemed reasonable. There are three basic categories of requests we consider. Annual recurring items such as the roads program and technology upgrades and replacements, episodic vehicle replacement to keep the fleet in reasonable order and special one-time projects like the boiler at Town Hall and the Elm Street project approved last year. Because we are committed to keeping the debt service at a constant 1.1 million annual maximum, the first category recurring items, typically 10 year items, takes a disproportionate portion of the debt capacity. The result is that over time, we have to rely more and more on transfers from the debt fund to offset the growing debt service. This is not a long-term sustainable situation. The attached table shows a constant and growing need for free cash transfers to the debt fund to continue the capital program as it is currently designed. We believe that the financial planning team should consider alternate ways of funding the capital program prior to the start of the fiscal year 23 capital considerations. The CIPC would welcome the opportunity to participate in those discussions. We would like to thank all the municipal and school departments and the enterprise managers for working with us to formulate this recommendation from the signed uh, North Reading Capital Improvement Cl Planning Committee. All right, Mr. Kelleher, take it away. Well, you've, you've just given my, my speech, so that's good. <laughs> um, it was, it was a, a, a tough year and the things kept bouncing back and forth a little bit, but we, we did go through um, all of the requests. And as, as Liz mentioned, there are going to be a couple of votes we'll have to take at the end of the meeting. We do have a quorum of the CIPC in attendance here tonight. We've got a, at least six, six members of the, the nine member committee. So we can, we can take care of those, those items. Um, what I want to do, we'll go through the, the list of items that, uh, that we're, we're recommending and, and we'll also can, can discuss those that have, have to be deferred because of, of funding limitations. Uh, we tried to do is get as, as much as we possibly could in because we didn't do an awful lot last year. So there were a lot of smaller dollar amount items that needed to be be uh, replaced or repaired. And um, uh, as I say, we deferred them from last year because we just didn't want to do anything in capital uh, other than what was absolutely necessary. And, 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 and we held it at that. Uh, in the, the report, talk about the, the need to take a, a look at the, how we fund this. Um, Typically, there is a, uh, a, a contribution made or from the free cash and debt and uh, raise an appropriate in, in June, uh, and then another free cash tranche in October to, to uh, A, fund the projects that we're doing to a certain extent and to build a reserve in the debt stabilization of the, the, the capital improvement stabilization fund. The fund is down under a million dollars um, and, and we've been trying to keep it at a million, but last year you may remember we did, we used it to fund a few items directly so that they wouldn't have to be bonded or be a, 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 a charge to the operating budget. So we, we depleted the fund a little bit last year intentionally I think it was the right thing to do to get some some uh, needed equipment uh, in in place during during the pandemic. Uh, the what we've seen this year, and, and it's unusual, is that we have five year items to bond, and and those are the 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 uh, uh, the study for the the intersections and the, the study for the force main for the, the, the treatment, uh, sewage treatment in, in the town center. These are projects that if, if they go forward are, are certainly going to cost a lot more than that, but there's the, the, the sewer project is about a $300,000 study. The full project, I don't know what it will be, but I'm sure it'll be in, in the millions. 
Um, because those projects haven't been presented or approved, um, the bonding, it, we're, we're limited to a five-year bonding on these items. So we're, we're taking $415,000 and paying for that over five years. And that, that's a pretty quick burn on the, on the fund. The other part is that we've got um, in the order of $1.7 million in, in bondable items that we're, we're recommending, and they're all 10-year items. We don't have any in the 15, 20, or 30-year category. They're all in the 10-year category, um, which includes the roads and some, some work being done on, on, on a couple of buildings and towns and, and a whole bunch of other, uh, other items. Uh, I mentioned in, in the, the, the memo to, to the select board that the 10-year items take a disproportionate bite out of the, the available debt service. And we're seeing it this year. I think we're going to continue to see that um, for, for a number of years to come. And the only way to, to do all the work that we want to do, which is somewhere north of $2 million a year in, in projects, um, is to increase funding. And the only way we can get funding at the moment is to increase um, contributions from free cash. Uh, we, we have a year this year where there is there's a, a fairly good supply of free cash, but it's not, not dependable. I know how tight the operating budgets are this year, and we probably are not going to be producing the kind of free cash that we have produced this year. So I think we need to sit back look at the program over the next the next six or eight months before we get into the, the next round and decide how do we want it to work? Uh, what can we, we possibly do uh, to keep the programs going uh, um, that, that we're, we need to do? The road program is very important and, and a, a, a good plan has been put together to, to, to improve the quality of the roads. But there are a lot of other things that, that go on as well. And so we've, we've got to look at uh, how we're gonna fund it. And I don't think that looking to free cash as the, as the, um, the balancing factor in the out years is, is going, to, going, to, going to work for us. Um, so with, with that as a, as a preamble, I, will, I, I think what we're doing this year is fine, um, but we do, we do need to, to look pretty closely and to try to, to find some other ways of, of doing business. Um, and I don't know what those are, but I think that we, we need to explore them. All right, um, what I would like to do, if, if you can share the screen, Liz, is to put up the, what we call the ranking sheet. Um, and, and what that is for those who aren't on the committee, we take all of the projects that are presented to us we interview and, and speak with the department heads that are making the requests for these, these, these items. In prior years, we, we would go out and do a, 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 a field trip to take a look at you know, trucks that, that are, or vehicles or whatever that needed, needed some uh, um, replacement or, or some repair. Uh, we didn't do that this year because of COVID. Um, it wasn't it wasn't appropriate to be doing that kind of a of a, a walk around and 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 gathering in groups. We've done everything by Zoom, so we relied on the the uh, the information that we got from the managers. And many of the items that were, were on there have been on before. So there were were vehicles that we looked at and and didn't recommend in prior years. And that guess what? They're one year older now, and and they're 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 more in need. Uh, so what we then do is each of the members of the committee individually ranks the items that have been presented on a scale of, of zero to five, five being the most imp important and zero being the, the least important. Once we have that individual ranking, we, we, we combine it and get an average ranking from the nine members of the committee and that it becomes our ranking sheet. And so we, we then will, and that's what Liz is gonna put up in a second. And that will show where the projects fell in the estimation of the nine members of the Capital Improvements Planning Committee as to the, the need to get that, 
that work done. So we want to put that up, Liz, and we can go through that. And I can do, speak as, as long or as short as you want on individual items. I think the, the, the select board has is, is, is gotten the package and has, has looked at all of these things. Um, so this is the order of ranking um, of the, the items. And uh, in, the, in column C is the amount that was requested by the, the department. Um, and then the next columns will show the, 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 what we think the life of the project will be for bonding purposes, or whether it will be an item that we're going to not bond, but um, uh, spend cash from, from the, either the, the raise and appropriate, which is, is really coming from free cash this year, or, or free cash. So um, as you can see right off the top, the, the second item there, and which is ranked as the second most important is the road rehabilitation and reconstruction program. The department requested $700,000 for this, which would, take, which would keep them on the plan that they established a few years ago for getting the, the streets in, in town up to a, a, a higher acceptable uh, level. Uh, we wanted to, to do it this year. We weren't able to do anything last year, so we missed a, a, a whole year of this. So we're one year behind, but this gets them back on, on, on track, but one year later. Um, we're recommending bonding a half a million dollars of the 700,000 and the other 200,000 be, be uh, funded from free cash. Um, The, uh, you can see the items on here, as I said, they're not, a lot of them are not huge, uh, portable radios, security upgrade systems, a FOB system for the, for the police department, uh, technology instruction equipment for, for the, the elementary schools, um, up on lines five and six is, is kind of a standard. It's the computer replacement plan for in, on line five for the municipal part of the, the, the operation and, and six, it's for the, the schools. Um, fire department has got a couple of items in here for, for uh, wireless fire alarm receiving equipment, which we've looked at for several years. I think it's a good idea. It gets us on a, it's a it really becomes a safety issue in that we can, um, uh, Communicate with with all the firefighters can all be communicating with one another and with 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 uh, with um, communities that we also provide um, um, backup services to. So it 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 is something. What I'm sorry, that's not the fire alarm equipment. That's the 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 portable radios. The fire alarm receiving equipment is to get us on a wireless system so that the call boxes can be read wirelessly rather than by by only by uh, a, uh, a wired system. Um, eventually what we're going to see here is that the call boxes that are in municipal buildings and in uh, other areas are be replaced um, and that we, we are at the whole system is wireless. Uh, to do that with all of the town buildings is probably about another hundred thousand dollars and that I expect we'll be looking at that either next year or the year after. Um, the downtown sewer force main system I've already, I already talked about, that's a $300,000 project, which we can bond for five years. There are some changes to the, the uh, uh, repairs to the, the senior center and the Damon Tavern, um, window replacement, sill replacement, some painting and scraping, you know, things that we have to do to preserve those buildings. Some security upgrades in the, in, in town hall, um, some repairs at the little school, uh, the salt shed at, at the DPW yard. Uh, we've been looking at this for the last three years and we're, we're, we are finally going to recommend doing it. We knew that it needed to be done. And you can go down the list. I don't think I, I need to, to, to re read them all, but you can go down the list. Where that got us on line 27 was to get us to the, um, uh, the putting the, the restrooms and shower facilities into the firehouse um, 
in the, the, the I'd say eventuality, but probability that we'll be hiring uh, one or more female firefighters in the, the not too distant future, and we don't have facilities for them. So we, we need to do this. The time to do it is not when we're out of time, but to prepare for it, get it done, um, and, and, and have it in place when we, when we hire uh, the, the first female firefighter. Um, Liz had mentioned that there is a, a change and the change is that the item 28, the sidewalk repair and tree removal uh, originally was not in our recommendation. Uh, it will be now and we're gonna be voting tonight to fund that with free cash. On line 29, so everything in that in column E uh, from line 29 above total $558,000. These are the items that we will be um, uh, paying for in, in cash. Um, and they're, they're built into, into the, the budget. So in the, in the memo, I said that we had received $4.3 million in requests and uh, we're recommending uh, 2.8 million the 2.8 million at, at that point was the 2,125,000, the 50, 518, excuse me, the 558,000 and the extra $200,000 for the roads. A lot of numbers, but you can do the math if you feel so inclined. We'll be increasing that by another $75,000 if we vote on that, that this evening. So items below we lost it, Liz. Okay, items below that line 29 were items that we could not recommend this year for lack of funds. They, they will be back again um, in, in, in subsequent years. Um, in, in, and the, 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 they include some, equip, some uh, vehicles, um, the sidewalk, phase, phase one of the sidewalks on Central Street, um, the, uh, some security upgrades, um, uh, and the uh, turf field. The turf field came up late in, in, the, in our discussion um, and the field has been down for about 10 years and will need to be replaced either next year or the year after. We're not sure. It's, it was, was, was assessed this year and found to be in, 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 in good working shape and poses no, no, no danger to any of the people using the field. So we've deferred that for another year. It'll be reevaluated next year. Uh, if it needs to be replaced, then, then we're gonna have to discuss how, how it's going to, be, going to be funded. But um, as you see, there are a number of items. Uh, if you go down, let's just slide down to the bottom of that page little bit to, yeah so there are almost 4.3 no up, up a little bit spec more okay about 4.3 million dollars in requests and we're recommending uh 2.9 million to be funded um for hillview there are there are 250,000. when we looked at this before in in, in my memo to the select board it says 195,900. So we're going to have to re-revote that this evening as well to increase that to um, $250,000. And then the um, water department, the water enterprise, you can go down a little bit more, Liz. Of 2,199,000, I think when we voted this, we voted, um, an, an extra four hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. So we're gonna we'll have to revote this. Um, we had double counted the painting of this of the the storage tanks. We had an item in there for six hundred thousand, which is the correct amount. There was also an item in there for four hundred and twenty-five thousand, and that was an amount from last year that that got carried over into this budget. But it 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 was duplicative of the the uh, the needs that that are going on. So we will need the committee. We'll re -need, need to revote the water enterprise capital uh, and reduce it by four hundred and twenty-five thousand um, dollars. So that's what we're what we're recommending, um, and the the um, 
debt service will be maintained at the $1.1 million um, level that, that has been established. Uh, and we will do that by recommending transfers as necessary from the, the capital improvement stabilization fund. Questions? Okay, thank you, Mr. Keller. Any questions? Mr. O'Leary? I just, uh, again, I didn't have the uh, opportunity to, to sit through all the discussions and see all the presentations that just um, a little second guessing here in relation to the intersection study and analysis at $115,000, how that would be more of a priority than some of the other items. But you know, other than that, again, I have, I have sat on the uh, Capital Improvement uh, Planning Committee and a lot of time and effort is put in and um, it's an interesting process in relation to, to rating it and I understand how it works. Uh, so again, I appreciate all the time, the effort that's been put in, that's been put into it. And also, you know, for the department heads and everybody who's been in there advocating, you know, it, it's difficult to maintain our facilities and um, be able to pay for it. And uh, it's not as though, you know, as I was talking to the town minister the other day, we were out in a walk down around the center of town, the old historic center. And, uh, truly, you know, the Damon Tavern and the Senior Center exterior is a tremendous need of repair and upgrading. And uh, I'm glad to see that they're, they're prioritized by the committee. So again, I appreciate all your efforts and everything that you put into it. And I intend on supporting it. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. O'Leary. Uh, Mr. Walner? Um, just one question. The turf field, are we talking about the new, I know you're not going to fund it this year, but we're talking about the football field, basically? Yes. And it already needs to be replaced or repaired. It um, it will need to be replaced. It it is approaching the end of its 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 useful life. Whether that's next year or the year after, it is uh, it is approaching it. Um, the bids that they got this year that they sh that they shared with the committee um, um, have a life of somewhere around ten years. Hmm. So it uh, okay. it. We were, we were a bit taken back, so we, we, we still think of it as brand new. <laughs> Actually, it's about 12 years old. <laughs> it looks, it well, still looks brand new, but anyways, um, who am I? All right, thank you. That's the only question I have. Mr. Strudo? Nope, all set, thank you. Thank you for your work. I know this uh, seems like a lot went into this. Mrs. Gonzalez? You're muted. I was just as surprised to hear how old the turf field was, Mr. Waller. <laughs> yeah, it went by fast. Um, thank you. Thank you for all the hard work and that's gone into this. Yeah, Mrs. Gonzalez also served on the committee and was a part of that. But and Mr. O'Leary, just to quickly answer that question, a lot of these were really just a percentage point or even a half a percentage point of a difference. I mean, if we could rank them all number one, they would have all been ranked number one, but they really weren't, didn't seem like there was a much, much of a disparity among the ranking. It just so happened what came to the top came to the top. And, and with regard to the turf field, there was a presentation of a, a study done with, in relation to um, its efficacy for, uh, concussion, I think, right, Mr. Kelleher, and where, and there were portions of it that were in more need of, you know, shoring up the, shoring up the infill areas to keep it, um, I guess, safe for play. So I think that's, that's more of, that's more of a concern that, I mean, it's safe for play, and it's not, I'm not saying that it's not safe for play, but that's the reason, part of the reason why it has to be replaced, um, you know, or restored or replaced it. At least that was my understanding of the presentation. We're going to re redo that study again next year and uh, that will inform the, the what, what the need is or the timing of the need. But, you know, if not next year, I would have to say certainly the, the following year. I mean, it, it is, is at getting, getting very close to the end of its, uh, it, of its useful life and uh, you don't want it to fail and then have to shut the field down. I mean, that's, that's not in anybody's interest, but we're not at that point. The study 
that, that was done showed it was perfectly safe to use. And uh, they are going to do a little, as you mentioned, little little infilling in, in some areas, but it is, is, is well within the range of, of acceptable for, for, uh, uh, for use. Thanks, Mr. Kelleher. Mrs. Hurlpa, did you have a question? Did you, you had a yellow hand raised, I saw, but now it's not. Who's debating? Um, am I correct in seeing that Representative Jones secured some amount of money towards um, intersections or whatever? And I say this um, in part uh, to let Steve O'Leary know that maybe there's help on the way. I thought I saw that he was he was getting a grant for the town for part of that. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mr. Gilberto. Yes, Madam Chair, that, that is correct. Our Representative Jones did secure uh, an earmark, um, or two earmarks actually, in the House approved version of the FY2022 um, state operating budget um, for uh, the intersection uh, analysis and also for, um, I believe, device replacement in the public schools as well. Um, so th those may be resources that, that defray the need um, for the capital project, um, should they survive the Senate and then ultimately the conference committee and the approved budget. Okay, any other questions? We're all set. Okay, so now we're going to take a motion, Mr. Studo. Ma Madam Chair, through you. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Gilberto. I, I believe the Committee uh, has action to take just prior to your vote, if that's uh, okay. Oh, a committee vote, yes. So for the members, for the record, for the members of the Capital Improvements Finance Committee, the members in attendance are Ms. Oh, Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. Harold, <laughs> but Mr. Kelleher. Mrs. Gonzalez, Mr. Gilberto, Ms. Rourke. I don't, is Ms. Rourke still with us here? Yes, first green. Yes. Okay, Ms. Rourke and Manupelli. And uh, is that everyone that's in attendance? It is, yes. Okay. That would be six of the nine members, so we, okay. would, have, we would have a quorum. All and, right. And so. we, we are posted. Madam Chair, I'm prepared to offer a motion for the committee if it's so willing to entertain it through you to Mr. Kelleher. Yes, please. Um, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Kelleher, I um, would move that we modify the recommendation to the select board for the fiscal year 2022 capital improvement plan to add sidewalk repair slash tree removal for DPW engineering in the amount of $75,000 to be funded with free cash and to modify the Hillview projects as follows. Increase green speed roller to $24,000, increase greens aerator to $32,000, Increase Green's walking mowers to $39,000. Increase Green's triplex or similar mowers to $45,000. Increase cart path paving and related costs to $65,000. Increase utility vehicle to 20, I'm sorry, um, strike that last one and add bunker restructuring in the amount of $20,000. Second. Thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> uh, there is one one more I think we do have to make, uh, Mr. Gloverto. I think we have to revote the amount of the, the water enterprise. We had originally voted uh, 2624379 and the amount should be 2199379 um, removing that erroneous $425,000 painting project on the uh, uh, the water towers. I will add that to my motion. Oh, Mr. Kelleher, Mrs. Brock has her hand up. 
I also just wanted to note that one of the funding sources uh, for water change to water infrastructure stabilization fund um, from authorization to borrow uh, the replace the 2005 international dump truck number 42 in the amount of $105,000. Mr. Gilberto, do you have to amend your motion? I will amend my motion um, as described to uh, strike the $425,000 painting project for uh, water towers and to um, amend, um, the, um, amend the total accordingly. And Liz, could you just restate that last part? <laughs> Yes, that of the two million one ninety nine three seventy nine in water enterprise capital requests, one hundred and five thousand of that is to be funded with water infrastructure stabilization fund, and the authorization to borrow is two million ninety four thousand three hundred and seventy nine dollars. Thank you. Okay, I'll second that amendment. Okay, we, we have a motion and a second, and um, any further discussion? Hearing none, then let we will vote on it. Uh, Mr. Gilberto? Aye. Mrs. Hurlbut? Aye. Uh, Ms. Rourke? Aye. Ms. Manupelli? Aye. Mrs. Gomez? Gonzalez. Gonzalez, I'm sorry. This is Gonzalez. I apologize. Aye. And um, I vote aye as well. Okay. All right. So it's as as a as amended. I think that's as a, as amended this evening. That's the recommended um, recommended capital expenditures. So do I have a motion, Mr. Studo? Yes. Madam Chair, I move to recommend it to town meeting the FY 2022 capital expenditures as recommended by the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. Second that. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Manu Pelli is I. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kelleher. Welcome. All right, we are moving on to our next order of business, which is public comment. And have we anyone in attendance? If you could raise your hand or put your, let us know in the chat room. And I have, Mrs. Coolidge Stoltz has her hand raised. So if you could please unmute yourself and just state your name and your address for the record, please. My name is Elizabeth Coolidge Stoltz and I live at Two Gillis Drive in North Reading. Please go ahead. Um, after you've been addressing the town's challenges, I apologize for publicly raising another tonight but I need to speak about the 40B proposal for 20 Elm Street in the context of the fact the town filed for Safe Harbor in August, 2019. And we are now entering the end game for adjudication of the town's Safe Harbor claim. Um, and my family has been caught in the crosshairs in that. So I'm speaking on behalf of my family and the hundreds of others who are at the point of the town sphere. One of the two ways to meet the state's goals for housing is through the general land area minimums, the GLAM criteria, because the state says that each town should have at least 1.5% of appropriate land in affordable or subsidized housing. When the town filed for safe harbor in August, 2019, the numbers provided by the state for North Reading indicated that we did. The developer's lawyers filed an appeal immediately because he would not accept no as an answer. I believed that the adjudication of the town's claim would play out according to the law in the housing appeals committee. 
and I was wrong, or at least naive. No developer had ever before actually questioned the state's numbers or their credibility or their accuracy in providing those numbers. But that developer did. And in the time since then, his lawyers started by stating in the initial appeal that they noted that North Reading has a large number of group homes. This is subsidized housing for the most vulnerable disabled citizens among us, including my only child. They indicated in that initial document that they intended to identify and attack those numbers so that they could decrease the acreage numbers for North Reading to the point that they could disqualify the town from having safe harbor and thus get their permission to build where they otherwise could not legally do so. No one whose family member lives in one of those homes was notified. It was not made public. I only found out because I went to those documents to look. They are public record. They are on the town website. Mr. Yeba and his LLC and Y Ventures did not win the right to use that information, which is privileged under HIPAA, other federal law and state law right away. When he did not win in private, shielded by the Housing Appeals Committee, his lawyers actually in October 2020 filed subpoenas with four state committees to get the raw unshielded data which would identify the location of every group home in this town. And there may be up to 50 or more of them, which would mean up to 200 or more people, all identifiable off of town census lists for where they live, all open to identity fraud and anything else that they could be subject to, all unprotected by any state, AG or other thing else, and I found out about it only because I was the butter and the guardian of one of those children. And after going to the Ark of Massachusetts and getting a letter of support and getting help from other individuals and finding out that the town council had written an excellent argument saying that the law should be protecting these people should be maintained through the Housing Appeals Committee because it was the law, but also finding out that had not been enough to deter the developer's attorneys from their argument that his rights superseded those of people already so vulnerable, they were in subsidized housing. I had to go out and hire my own attorney at my expense to file the affidavits to make the point that these people are not abstractions and their problems are not hypothetical, but they are real people who would suffer permanent and irrevocable harms because group homes can't pack up and move if he got his way and made an attempt to, detect, to destroy the town's safe harbor status. Now we are in the end game because August, 2019, almost two years ago is when the safe harbor adjudication was filed. Mr. Yaba is still proceeding through the Housing Appeals Committee. He is still playing his last cards. We are still having teleconferences and I'm still paying attorney bills representing the people who are at direct risk here. And I'm speaking tonight because we are ending the period when we can do something to protect the process that was supposed to be provided by for law and protect hundreds of residents of this town who don't have a direct voice. Please, I was advised today when I contacted one of the offices for someone who represents us in the state legislature that the appropriate thing to do at this time is to make a direct request for help from the attorney general's office for an evaluation and direct intervention of the civil rights of these people. I did that as an individual last November, but it was a blind email and phone call and I didn't get a response. I'm asking you as the select board to please ask for direct representation for these people for their civil rights. I'm asking please for the awareness that this affects everyone in town for all of us are citizens of this town and no one's rights should matter less or more than anyone else's. 
we should be doing everything in our power to have inclusive permanent housing added in locations that matter. That's why we got a state approved affordable housing plan. But please let us not lose on this when we are so close to having a determination made only because someone who has more power and more money and doesn't care is willing to spend what it takes to trample the rights of people who have no voices, sometimes literally. Please, and thank you for your time. Thank you, Mrs. Stoltz. And just, we, we don't typically, um, uh, what I wanted, want to tell you is that these concerns have, have been brought to the attention of our council and the town's position has been, um, you know, the town's position has been clear in the context of the HAC proceeding that, um, that, that is protective of these individuals rights. I think what you're asking is something, it's something different. And I think given the posture of the HAC, that if you, if you went back to the AG's office again now, that might be different given, given the HAC's decisions and the town's opposition to what the HAC is, is um, permitting here. I think we are, we're in solidarity and alignment with your position on this matter, even though you have a direct, you know, you have, you have a direct um, interest at stake, but we are fighting, um, you know, we are, we, we are standing and in, in defending the position that the calculation is a calculation and shouldn't be peeled back in any way because it was provided by the state and we are, um, you know, we are keeping to that, keeping to that position in the proceedings. But given the decisions that have been rendered, it might change the, change the position of the AG to come in and step in to help you. Um, and, and that might be something to go back to, but we are, we are bringing these concerns to our council um, that you're raising to us this evening and that you have raised to us previously. So thank, thank you for your time to talk talk, with, talk talk with us. I don't know if any of my other colleagues have anything to add to that, but Mrs. Gonzalez. Just that as a mother, you tugged my heartstrings and I'm just, whatever we can do. Uh, I mean, absolutely. Like we are aware as, um, as Mrs. Manupelli just said, we are aware of all of this. We know what is happening, but of course, whatever we can do, we will do. We're on the same page. Okay. I guess right. my question is what can you do? Because I mean, this has been ongoing for years and it took well over $10,000 of our money to actually get anything accomplished. And I don't have endless funds to keep sinking in this. Um, I, I don't think that we're going to be able to comment because it is an active case. And I don't think we're going to be able to comment about legal strategy or um, things like that in this context. But that's fine. That's an answer. But Thank you, you very know, much. Having said that, it's basically just to, to, the town's position is in line with you as we believe that the developers attempt to get this confidential data and this confidential information about group homes is contrary to the law, just as you've, you've recited it. That is the town's position and that's the position that the town has asserted and will continue to assert. That's um, fine. So thank you very much for with your position in that regard. Thank and you. Just one more thing. I think Mr. O'Leary might have had his hand raised. I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to add, Mr. O'Leary. No, no, other than again, uh, when uh, Ms. Schultz uh, approached us the other day uh, with a lot of these details, um, it, it is outrageous as to what's occurring here, and it's wrong. And I think if I think you've heightened our awareness most certainly, and I think um, we will have additional discussion with council as to what avenues would be available to us as a town to ensure that the appropriate authorities and if it's the attorney general's office or anybody else, uh, encourage them to get involved. So um, 
to the chair's point, you know, we don't want to get into strategies at this point, but it's uh, time is marching on and the opportunities are going to be limited if we don't take advantage of the, the timing that you made us aware of right now. So again, we are all on the same page. We think what's occurring here specifically in relation to the group homes uh, being identified is outrageous and unconscionable. And, um, but we understand, you know, what, what's driving the bus uh, for the developers, uh, the ability to develop that land in a way in fashion, which he seems is, is, is in his best interest, not necessarily um, taking into consideration the um, best interests of the people that the residents of those homes. So um, we will do whatever we can to ensure that uh, everybody's interest is protected appropriately. I appreciate it and thank you for your time. Thank you. And is there anyone? Oh, Mr. Studo. And I'd just like to add to um, that, um, Mr. Schultz, I, I'm a, I was as frustrated as you on the process and the timeline. As someone for the first time in a government role, it moves a lot slower than the private sector where you know you can do things differently. So, but I was told it is a process and I can assure you that every step has been taken to make sure that this developer is held accountable for his actions. I can leave it at that. And I, and I agree with, you know, my colleagues that we are, you know, we're, we're in lockstep and it's just sometimes if things look, if things seem like they're going slower than expected, it's because as I've been told now on numerous occasions, it is the process that it has to be followed for good or for bad. So I just wanted to let you know that it's not, you know, we, we want the same resolution and we're working towards the same thing. It's just sometimes if it seems like things are moving at a snail's pace or maybe not going like we want, it's sometimes just because the process is what it is. And, you know, we are at the mercy of the HAC, HAC. you know, that, so. Actually, let, let me clarify one thing. I, I understand process is process. I understand the HAC is extremely convoluted um, and that I don't really understand the HAC. Um, what I guess I was asking and the answer may <coughs> be, and I appreciate that, that I should be going back to the um, attorney general's office because it's independent and going there last November was an entirely different matter. Um, what I guess I was asking inarticulately for which I apologize when I said was there something you could do directly um, was not a legal strategy issue. It was asking you essentially as the governing body for the town um, and speaking for the town residents who live in the group homes <coughs> under Pina was, um, whether you could on their behalf either talk to the attorney general's office or give me the name or contact information of whom I would contact or should contact in as much as la last fall when I tried blindly, I simply tried civil rights and disability and got nowhere. But if the answer is that's not the appropriate question to ask you, then I understand that and that's fine. I'll do it else another way. I just have been ineffectual so far, but that's what I was so, trying to get at. So thank no, you. I think, I think you're, you're quite clear. And I think if, if we could just be clear to you that like Mr. Studo said, it, that, that we're aligned with your position on this matter. And we don't think that the HAC should be a roundabout way to circumvent privacy laws for the residents of these group homes. And we're opposed to that and we're taking that position and have maintained that position throughout this process. And there are some, you know, without getting into a dialogue again about the case, there, there appear to be some rulings <laughs> that are contrary to how rulings have happened previously. And I think you, you really can't take our advice on how to proceed because you're represented in that matter and have counsel, but perhaps the rulings that have 
recently been issued might, you know, might hasten a response when you reach out. But I also think perhaps maybe we can talk with you offline, uh, you know, it's, instead of in a public discussion where the, where it's it is. It's also fun. I just appreciated your yeah. time to lay it out yeah. tonight. Thank and, you. And I don't want to make you stay any later because I know you guys yeah. always stay too late anyway. So thank you. <laughs> Who told thank you, you that? Very, thank you very much. All right. Thank she, you. She and her husband have sat through many I know. You, I know. And, and don't, don't, don't underestimate your impact either. You're not ineffectual okay. or ineffective. <clears throat> well, if all things are relative, but thank you very much. Okay, thank, thank you. you. All right, is there anyone else that wishes to speak during the <clears throat> public comment? If you could raise your hand or put a note in the chat room. And I'm seeing none. Do you see any, Mr. Gilberto? All set? Okay, so we yeah. can. Moving on to our next order of business, it's the 148 to 150 Park Street development zoning proposal. Um, Mr. Gilberto. Madam Chair, thank you. I believe that the developer is here along with his uh, attorney, Mr. Latham, um, and uh, the engineering yes. folks. So I, I know they sent a letter asking for the opportunity to be before you, and I believe it was sure. in your meeting packet. Um, sure. So if it's okay with you, I, I think we just turn it over to uh, to Attorney Latham. Attorney Latham. Sure. Welcome. Madam Chair, can you hear me? Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Um, I'm filling in for my son, Chris, who's here, but he had a COVID shot. He's a little under the weather. So I told him I'd take over and make the presentation. We, first of all, appreciate the time you spent in listening to us in the past. <clears throat> I'd like to go over a couple of points, if I could, very quickly. Uh, could you share your screen with me, Madam Chair? I think, Mr. Gilberto, you have to do that, correct? Um, Attorney Latham, are you looking to share your screen? Uh, yes, I'd like to put something up if I could. Sure, you should be able to, and if you need me to invite you to, I can. Okay. So on, on your the bottom icons on your screen, you'll see the, there you go. Okay, can you see that now? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, the first item is we've heard uh, a question of whether this might be spot zoning. So I thought it'd be appropriate to have a quick um, discussion on that. Uh, and I've got quoted here some sources of that, but basically um, the state of the law in Massachusetts now is that the size of the spot that's involved is not really the crucial issue by itself. Uh, and uh, I've, the first one is a treatise, a well-regarded handbook. Uh, the invalidity of a spot zoning depends upon more than the size of the spot. Uh, the legality of a giving zoning amendment turns not on what parcel has been singled out or even on the effect of the parcel, but rather on whether the change can fairly be said to be in furtherance of the purposes of the zoning act. Every presumption is in favor of the bylaw. Once it is established that an amendment promotes public welfare or public benefits, the desirability of a particular location is up to town meeting. It's a local matter. The size of the area set aside for the purpose is likewise a matter of local jurisdiction. So if rezoning bears a rational relationship to a permissible public objective, the action of the local legislative body here at town meeting will be upheld. We think it's clear that what's being proposed does have a significant public benefit, provides senior housing, provides senior affordable housing, uh, vitalizes the historic center, and the overlay districts are located in a perfect neighborhood, as I'll discuss briefly later on, for senior residences. A different topic, which unfortunately we just heard about in a very dark sense, is, is we've been told we should at least describe how we are not like 20 Elm Street. And so we've got a matrix here, we'll go through very quickly. 20 Elm Street has four times the number of units we're discussing, <clears throat> has four times, over four times the number of bedrooms. Uh, the flow from the sewer system, the affluent is six times what would be generated by this project. Our septic system is outside the buffer zone, unlike that other project. That project has five stories in four buildings we have two and a half stories in one building. This is significant, surface parking. 
we have a, a garage that's being proposed under the building. That project has 178 spaces outside surface parking. Ours has 18. Uh, that's 10 times, almost 10 times. And the runoff from that, of course, is, can be significant. Wetlands, uh, we have a different relationship to wetlands. Theirs has two or three sides abutting wetlands. Ours has one. It's only a, a 20% coverage. Architecturally, I will not talk about theirs, except that ours is authentic historically. Uh, and compared to the massing of that project, it's like apples and oranges. <clears throat> the neighborhood, how does the neighbor react? You know how the neighborhood reacted to the 40B <laughs> project. Uh, ours is compatible. And in fact, at the public hearing, the, uh, the immediate abutter spoke in support of this rezoning. Impact on the town, the others will have impact on many issues and it's distance from emergency response. Uh, we provide senior housing has a positive cash flow to the town, no skyline effect, it is built into the natural grade, uh, and as we've uh, discussed screening at length. Peter Ogren is here, and when there are any particular questions when I'm through, you can certainly address them to him. I'd like to give him just a quick synopsis on the benefits as we see it of the zoning that's before you. The site is now used for auto repair and a steel company, has stacked inventory of metal outsides, operates a forklift, flatbed trucks come and go in delivering and removing inventory. There's a fairly large open parking area with no drainage controls. That's the current condition. So we're not comparing to a pristine woodlot to tearing everything down, cutting everything down and creating this project. This is frankly an improvement ecologically. The town needs are addressed by the zoning change. Again, I said, uh, providing housing for senior centers, affordable housing, senior citizens. A uh, special permit uh, proposes local preference. So when the applicant applies to the uh, zoning, uh, to the uh, planning board, CPC, uh, in essence, it will be a local preference for all of the market units. It's envisioned those that come on online in different phases. So at each phase, notice will be given publicly, giving the citizenry the opportunity uh, to apply if they want to and giving them a preference on the market units as well. Uh, this will provide a, a positive cash flow. You saw that at the last presentation. And the town retains control. Part of the concept of doing an overlay district is that you still have the special permit control. You still have the site plan review control. This is in a historic, district, historic district area. And as a consequence, the historic district commission will have uh, input as to this as well. <clears throat> so if rezoning passes town meeting, it is not the end, but simply the beginning of the, of the public process. Uh, and as I say, the advantages are the revitalization, the historic center, uh, building design is compatible with Namungan architecture. Again, no skyline defect, close to emergency services, unlike some other projects, uh, and, um, and it's near underutilized areas. And that's a very important point if I can. And I'd like to go to a picture that I borrowed from your website. This is a good picture, because as you know, off to the right is the project itself. Look at those natural features of the town that senior citizens can use, that they can walk to with this project. There's the library at this location. There's the, the senior center over here, the Ellery Senior Center. And this is a wonderful area for seniors to exercise, get fresh air. And so our hope is that uh, you would consider the benefit of that. Bruce Willis is also proposing. Me, Bruce Wheeler is also proposing that as part of his application before the CPC, he would improve and provide a walkability of this open area. Perhaps have some seating out there and do some landscaping. It would be done in a sensitive manner, uh, so as not to interfere with the sliding that takes place in the wintertime out here. But would provide the ability to use this for the for the senior citizens and other citizens in the town themselves. Part of that proposal would also be that the cost of maintaining that would be borne by the Homeowners Association for the people across the street, the seniors who can use it. So in closing to our presentation, we sincerely believe that this will be benefit the town and the senior citizens, uh, that it's consistent with the mass and, and housing production plan that talk about a public-private partnership. That's really what this is. This started 
we, we certainly did initiate that, but through the meetings with various boards and citizens, this has morphed into a product that is a synthesis of the town's input. Uh, and we respectfully request your support at town meeting. If for any reason you are not inclined to support, we'd greatly appreciate your advising us as to what we must do to get your support. And we thank you very much for your time. I'm sorry I went through this so quickly, but I know that you're at a tight timeline. Thank, thank you. you. Let's see if there's any, that was very helpful. Let's see if uh, any of my colleagues have any questions while your, your whole team is here. Uh, Mr. O'Leary? No, as usual, I, again, uh, Mr. Wheeler has uh, put together a, a very a good proposal and again has done his homework and has assembled this, this team that he's had for years. And, and again, they always do a good job of uh, addressing the concerns, uh, outlining exactly what they're going to do and follow through with what they say they're going to do. And um, it appears as though, um, you know, he's, he's limited the opposition if there is any, but I haven't heard much about it other than maybe a little density issues. But other than that, I think they've done a good job of making their presentation. I think uh, should town meeting move forward and rezone this, I mean, this, as they pointed out, there'll be other steps in the process where the specifics will be ironed out, you know, through the site plan review and community planning commission. So again, I applaud your efforts. I applaud your uh, continuing effort to, to gain support beforehand. And again, be as transparent as you can before town meeting uh, takes the action on it. So. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you for your thoughtfulness and your outreach. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Mr. O'Leary. Mrs. Gonzalez? Great presentation. I appreciate it. Uh, you did answer some questions in that presentation that had been asked of me from residents. So um, I appreciate getting those questions answered. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Walner? Um, I appreciate that the uh, request for local preference has made it a little bit more formally into your proposal. I'm glad to hear that it's going to be a special permit. I still would like to know more details when you have those before it gets to town meeting and we vote, because um, I think that's just really, really important that our town gets the first chance to get into these buildings, because that's the main point of this anyways. Um, so uh, I appreciate you bringing it forward the way you have. I look forward to hearing more details about that, how that's gonna be locked in. And then the other thing I'll just let you know is that there's a very good chance that the uh, senior center at some point will be become an intergenerational community center and not at this particular location. So you should just be aware of that. Um, and I don't think you have heard that yet. Thank you, that's it. Mr. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Well, Mr. Studo. Um, no, I think they have, uh, they've met all the questions I had and, you know, I, I saw the very early stages of this at the CPC as well as liaison. And, uh, I do agree as well. I like that we're taking a shot with the resident preference. I mean, you know, let's see if that stacks up to whatever rules are out there that would or would not permit it. But, you know, I think it's always worth the chance because that it's great if we can get that done. And uh, yeah, I think um, I will say this, it is the right way to do a project from start to finish, you know, versus the not right way, which Mr. Latham, thank you very much for, you know, giving me uh, another slide of, you know, what's wrong with certain other projects. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Stewart. I, I would agree. I would just say a little differently that the interactive way that you've worked with um, not just this board. I mean, this is the third time that you, that we've had you back here to explain things, and that that was extremely helpful because I had my concerns were really the proximity to the river and the impact on the river, and that that slide was extremely that that slide was extremely helpful to sort of explain and break that apart because those are the same concerns, of course, for Elm Street, but also I know this isn't the only board you've been to multiple times. And this was even before you got here with your team, we, we heard from our planner uh, on this proposal a few times as well. So it's been um, extremely helpful to have that interactive dialogue. And I think that's also another pretty considerable distinction between your project proposal and the zoning proposed and the other the other matter up the road. So I appreciate that too. Thank you. So thank you. All right. And if there's nothing further, 
um, where we're moving on. We'll move on so, to the Madam next Madam Chair, when are, when are we going to get a, or have we yet gotten a formal uh, recommendation from the Planning Commission? I know that they're sponsoring this, right? So the assumption is they're advocating for it. Oh, I, I thought, oh, Miss, I knew Miss McKnight was joining us. Welcome. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, the, the CPC has voted to recommend this article and is also the article sponsor. I thought you had already done that, Miss McKnight. We did. The, before the last time you came before us, or, yes, That's and right. there were there were some slight changes that the developer, or well, there were changes the developer had made that were incorporated actually after our last meeting with the developer, right? There were or was a that number. How of, you voted it? It was voted. There were a number of changes that were incorporated. That's correct. Um, a couple of things. Um, <clears throat> happened after the CPC already had their public hearing though. And I think maybe if attorney Latham wanted to explain those, I think okay. that might be best. Oh, okay. In addition to what we just heard this evening? Um, it had to do with the local preference for the market rate units and also um, attorney Latham, what was the, I'm sorry, what was the other item we had discussed? Permanent, deed, permanent, permanent deed restriction for the low income? That's already done, so it would be in okay. perpetuity. It, that made it into the article. Um, oh, okay. There was another point that was a little late to have made it into the article because the CPC had already um, done the hearing. And I know it had to do with, um, one of them was uh, that the market rate units would have local preference. So I know that the uh, developer has agreed to make that part of their project. It just can't be part of the zoning at this stage. Um, <laughs> because of where the, we were with the CPC's hearing and recommendation. Um, and I, I believe there was one other detail. Um, and I'm sorry, if I don't know if Attorney Latham can remind me what that other one was. Um, Attorney Latham? Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. The other one was to look in a more expansive way uh, at the accessibility for affordable units. And we're, we're still looking at that. that. That requires a fair amount of research, but we're still looking at that to broaden the scope of the uh, accessibility issue. So that's a design, is that a design element more so than a zoning element? It, it, will, it will be a design item because okay. it, it's a spatial issue. Okay, all right. So Mr. Mr. Walner, I think Thanks. this is the issue that you wanted to hear more about. Yeah, I just I just like to know because I didn't see because I did read through our packet and I didn't see in the what we're voting on. Uh, I didn't see local preference in there other than the affordable units, which I know is in there. So how will the CPC or how will the local preference program work and how will we enforce that? And maybe Danielle can answer that. I'm not sure. Uh, Madam, through the chair. Yes, I try to like them. Thank you. Uh, the local preference would work so that uh, before a phase comes on, let's assume that each phase is five units. Before that phase comes on the market for sale, uh, the developer would put in the local paper, perhaps put in the town website if you wanted to, on his website that it's coming along, five units will be available and have a window of time in during which the citizenry can apply and they get preference. Uh, obviously it's gonna be at, at, well, the normal kind of market buying, but they've got the first opportunity to buy units. And every time a phase comes on, they do a re-advertising for that phase. I've, so, I've done that in Topsfield and Bruce has done it in different locations as well. And is that for local preference for income mm -hmm. eligible for also the, the low income housing units? That, no, that, I'm talking about the actually the market units as well. Okay, so Mr. Walner, I'm sorry, you did you raise, did you have so a follow-up? Where will that, who's, what, it's not making it into the article, um, whatever article it is in town meeting, it's not described in there. Where will it be described and who's going to have authority over that within the town? It's, it's not within the zoning because this occurred after the CPC voted and we, we don't have time to do it before you close the warrant. But it would be incorporated into any special permitting condition. Exactly correct. So in the in the zoning article permits the developer to seek a special permit for the development. And that's where you would that's where that they would be bound by a, 
a decision. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Mrs. McKnight. You're is right, Madam Chair. That would yes, be Madam Chair. That's correct. Okay. Yes, uh, Mr. 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 Walner, we're we're putting together our. This is uh, Mr. Wheeler now. Mr. Wheeler speaking now. <coughs> uh, we're we're putting together our marketing plan for the local preference this week, and before the end of the week, I can submit. Uh, uh, our draft, our, our marketing plan for the local preference to both the select board and the CPC. That'd be great. Mr. It'd nice O'Leary? To, it'd be nice to tighten this up before we get to voting. Sorry, Ms. Okay. Sorry, Mr. Walner. I do, I it, it, Are it, you all I'm set? sorry, to the chair. No, it's okay. You all set? Do you have any other questions? No, I just, it would just, I'm just, thank you for doing that. It, it'd be nice to get this all kind of tightened up before we get to town meeting and have to vote on it. Okay. And I appreciate Mr. it. Mr. O'Leary. Uh, and this is more to, to Danielle. Uh, just, is the Planning Commission planning on offering any friendly amendments within the four corners <coughs> of the article to incorporate some of these into the proposed zoning bylaw? The CPC hasn't had a discussion about this article and amendments um, yet. Uh, their next meeting does not have this on the agenda. Um, we, if anything would be done, the CPC won't have another meeting prior to town meeting where they would hear this article again. So I think if the CPC was in favor of a particular motion, they would need to discuss it probably at the meeting directly before town meeting and that it would be done on town meeting floor. It, it really was too late for the CPC to formally incorporate anything more. I think at this point we would be talking about amendments, although I, I, I do think that the CPC needs to speak a little bit further with the applicant's attorneys so, because we want to do this in such a way that they believe will be favorable to the project and to the vote. Right. I just think, you know, some of what's been offered up here is, is extremely helpful to Mr. Walner's point uh, in ensuring you know, what we're looking to achieve here. And I think if we can incorporate it into the zoning bylaw, it would be very helpful if the Planning Commission could carve out a little time to, to consider those and come forth with the amendments, be, as the proponent, propose those amendments that, uh, that the developer is offering up. Uh, and I just think it strengthens the argument for sure. That's something that I can continue to speak with um, the applicant's attorneys about. I know that, um, you know, I, I do want to allow them to approach the motions in, in a way that, I mean, I know it's the CPC sponsored article, but we want to approach it in a way that they feel will be most favorable to their project. So I think it's a good possibility, but we do need to talk with them a little further about it. Yeah, I just, I think they need to provide themselves an opportunity to do that, that's all. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Wheeler. Gonzalez. Uh, thank you. Um, I just wanted to clarify a statement Mr. Walner made. Um, I, I just was not aware that there was something definitive. I don't know if that was he was suggesting about the senior center moving. Um, I've never heard anything definitive on that. Just maybe speaking to the town planner. I don't think that, oh, I'm sorry. Th 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 Let's I'm make nine. Um, I, I don't know? have any further information about um, the progress of the plans for the intergenerational community center, um, whether it's the location that had been looked at at Ipswich River Park or some other location, I don't have any more up-to-date information about that. Okay, thank you. Um, Maybe something to discuss later on in our agenda when we plan the strategic plan meeting. Um, but Attorney Latham, I did have a quick. Oh, my, I'm sorry, Mr. Studo. Do you have any questions? Did we already? Did you have any questions? No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay, just on the on the North Reading resident preference, I guess that we're talking about. That would be. Would that be for the affordable housing units as well as the market rate units? The uh, affordable units have to meet state DHCD requirements. And so the town has to show that there's a need for a preference. We will, we will follow whatever the state and the 
the uh, town wants and what the state approves for local preference and affordable. We can't control that. Okay. But we, but we can make the promise on the market units beyond that. Okay. So in other words, you can't, you can't earmark those only for North Reading residents. No, we can't. It has to be a certain percentage and then the state has to agree to allow us to do that. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Are we all set? Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It. Let's just. <clears throat> all right. I think we you have to unshare your screen to Attorney Latham. I'm probably going to log off so that I, I don't know how to do it. So I'm going to log. I'll come back <laughs> <Okay>. on. <laughs> All right. That'll Thank probably you. work too. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So our, we do not have a motion in the packet on that, do we? No. Okay. Madam Chair, through you, the motion would be with the remainder of the warrant article recommendation. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, so that's our next order of business actually, is to review and discuss <coughs> the June town meeting warrant articles and to vote on the recommendations. <coughs> Adam Chair. And Mr. Gilberto, just I'm, trying to find that in the packet, so. There's a separate document that was uploaded um, later this uh, afternoon. There should be a link in your email to bring you to it, but I'm gonna put it up on the screen if that's okay. Thank you, that's good, that's okay. good. Thank you. It's in the packet, but not the modified version, so. Correct. All right. I tried to modify right. it as the numbers were being changed relative to the capital plan as well. So hopefully I got everything. And I believe the finance director is still on. Liz, are you, are you there? Yes. Thank you. So I'm gonna ask Liz to speak to the dollar amounts for the respective articles. Uh, I wanna uh, just let the board know um, we had an oversight in preparing the motions. We normally will put in bold for each motion for recommendations, which what we're recommending for action. We didn't, that, that didn't make it into the motions in the packet. So I will verbally convey my recommendation um, as we go through each article, if that's okay. Please. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. So starting with article one, the FY 2021 budget amendment, Madam Chair, through you to the finance director, are there any recommended transfers at this point in time? Uh, at this point in time, we do not have any FY21 budget amendments. So I typically, we wait until um, town meeting or right before town meeting when we have a better idea. But at this time, I do not know of any. Um, none have been brought to my attention. Okay. Thank you. But through you, Madam Chair, and to the board, my recommendation would be to um, consider a motion to recommend this article at town meeting. Okay. Let's, shall we take these now while we're going through them? I, my, that'd be my suggestion, yeah. Okay. Just, so do we have a motion, Mr. Studo? Madam Chair, I move to recommend the town meeting, Article 1, FY 2021 budget amendment. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, <laughs> second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Manu Pelli is aye. We're at the town meeting. Madam Chair, through you, Article 2, um, the finance director presented what the dollar amount is anticipated to be. If, uh, Liz, if you wouldn't mind repeating that. This would be to fund the snow and ice deficit. We will be funding the snow and ice deficit with free cash in the amount of $47,155. Do I have a motion to recommend Article Two? Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article Two, Fund FY twenty one snow and ice deficit. I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. Keller has his hand raised. I don't know if that's from before or not. And I can hear somebody in the background too. I do not have my hand raised. Oh, that's my, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was my, I'm sorry about that. 
That was my cursor and it looked like a hand raised. All right, I apologize. Okay, so do we have a motion we'll to- get that hand fixed. <laughs> do we have a motion to recommend article two? Uh, fund the fund the a uh, transfer of forty seven one fifty five from free cash for the snow and ice deficit. Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article Two fund FY twenty twenty one snow and ice deficit. Second. Motion by Mr. Sudo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further <clears throat> discussion? Seeing none. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Manu Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, yeah. through you, Article 3, funding the 2021 appropriation of funds to the Capital Improvement Stabilization Fund, through you, Madam Chair, to the Finance Director. Okay. Ms. Roar. We will be appropriating um, the amount of $1,341,000 from free cash. Thank you, Madam Chair. My recommendation to the board would be to vote to recommend. Do I, do I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to recommend article, <clears throat> excuse me, article three FY 2021 appropriate funds to capital improvement stabilization fund. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? I have a question on this. <clears throat> if we are, to consider further guidance with the Rescue Act funds? Are we, if we vote to recommend this now through the free trash, tra free, free cash, I was gonna say free trash, because it's getting like <laughs> free cash transfer. And then we, as we determine that some of the funding can be utilized, I don't know if we're gonna have the time between now and town meeting, we would be doing a motion on the floor to amend that to, or you are just recommending that we keep it as free cash, Mr. Gilberto. Madam Chair, through you, um, so we are we're we're recommending the entirety of this warrant, sort of independent and not relying on any federal funding, as you as we've discussed. Mm -hmm. um, if there were to be a modification in funding source, we have the opportunity to review that with the finance committee and with a select board prior to the town meeting, and it would come in the form of a of a, a, a change to the main motion. To, uh, on the floor of town meeting. And, um, we, so we do have the opportunity to make that change and would not require a change in the article because I expect it would just reduce the dollar amount we're talking about here. Okay, all right. Okay, thank you. So seeing no further discussion on the motion by Mr. Studo, seconded by Mr. O'Leary to recommend the appropriation from free cash. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Manny Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, through you, Article 4, Fiscal Year 2021 Transfer of Funds to the Water Stabilization Fund, through you to the Finance Director. Mr. Roth. We will be recommending to transfer the balance of retain, water retained earnings in the amount of $14,665. Thank you, um, Ms. Rourke. Um, to you, Madam Chair, to the board, our recommendation would be to vote to recommend. Okay. Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 4, FY 2021, transfer funds to water stabilization fund. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, uh, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Minnie Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, through you uh, for Article 5, um, there, there may be a recommendation for a transfer to occur at town meeting once we have uh, finished the total financial plan for June town meeting, which we're pretty close to at this point. But my, re my recommendation would be to the board to vote to recommend this at town meeting um, at this time. And we can come back and, and address that right before town meeting. Okay. Do we have a motion to recommend Madam, at town meeting? Madam Chair, I move to recommend at town meeting Article 5 FY 2021 appropriate money to stabilization. Second. 
Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mandy Pelly is aye. Madam Chair, through you, Article 6 of Fiscal Year 21, transfer of funds to uh, OPEB. Um, we do not anticipate recommending a transfer at this point in time. Um, but uh, So I would therefore um, recommend that the board consider voting to recommend a town meeting this article uh, with the expectation that we're likely going to be recommending to pass over the article. Madam Chair, I move to recommend the town meeting, Article 6, FY 2021, transfer funds to other post-employment Benefits Liability Trust Fund. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Me and you, Pelly, is aye. Madam Chair, through you, Article 7, Fiscal Year 2021, transfer funds to the Solid Waste Stabilization Fund. We customarily evaluate where the program is financially toward the end of May and provide a number to the select board and the finance committee right prior to town meeting so it can be as accurate as possible for this transfer. And I would therefore recommend that we, that the board vote to um, recommend that town meeting this article. Madam Chair, I move to recommend the town meeting article seven FY 2021 transfer funds to solid waste stabilization fund. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Me and you, Pelly, is aye. Madam Chair, through you, Article 8, Fiscal Year 21, Appropriation of Funds to the PFA Fund. We do not anticipate a transfer going into this fund at this point in time, as we customarily do that at the October town meeting. And we uh, would therefore recommend that the board consider a vote to recommend at town meeting this article with a likely recommendation being to pass over. Madam, Madam Chair, I move to recommend the town meeting article eight, appropriate funds to participating <laughs> funding arrangement fund. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manu Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, through you, Articles 9, 10, and 11 are routine articles for the selection of town officers, hearing reports from town officers and committees uh, if they are proposed, and authorizing the Public Works Director to accept easements. Um, and I should extend that to include Article 12 as well for the treasurer to enter into compensating balance agreements. So um, we have four individual motions and our recommendation would be to vote to recommend all four articles. Okay. Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 9, select town officers. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manu Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 10, here and act and reports of town officers and committees. Second. Motion by Mr. <laughs> Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manu Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 11, authorize Director of Public Works to accept easements. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manu Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 12, authorize Treasurer to enter into compensating Balance agreements. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. 
me and you, Pelly, as I. Madam Chair, through you, Article 13, authorizing Chapter 90 highway construction funding. This provides an authorization for the Department of Public Works to expend the Chapter 90 allocation. Um, to the finance director, I, I, do, I don't have our letter right in front of us. I don't know if you have access to the number. I think it's $516,000, but if by chance you have it in front of you, that would be helpful. And I would <clears throat> it's not vote it as an appropriation, it's voted as an authorization. Do do we need the do we need the amount? To, in my to, opinion, no, you don't. Okay, it's nice to know it, and I think it came up in the capital improvement planning committee meetings. But if you had it handy, Ms. Rourke, just to let the board members know. Yes, one moment, please. Um, and I just wanted to say that you won't be voting the dollar amount, but it, it's nice to just know what we are are receiving. So let Madam me see. Madam Chair, through you, the amount is $516,699. Okay, thank you. Do we have a motion to recommend Article 13? Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 13, authorize Chapter 90 highway construction. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manu Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, through you, Article 14 prior year bills, uh, I believe, Liz, are we up to three bills that we're aware of at this point? Uh, I'm only aware of two at this point. Okay. Um, we may be aware of another one. So typically we wait until it gets a little further along um, or, you know, we do this at town meeting. Okay, so the recommendation will be to recommend a town meeting. <laughs> Madam Chair, I move to recommend the town meeting Article 14 prior year of bills. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo. <clears throat> Second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manu Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, through you, Article 15, um, this is one that uh, was under development uh, until as late as this afternoon. Um, ultimately, the recommendation after talking with town council and the finance director, um, based upon the DOR's guidance, is that the board seek authority from select board from the town meeting to file a home rule petition that would allow us to establish a cell tower receipts reserve fund. Um, which would uh, allow for the um, proceeds of leases that we have on the cell towers on the water towers with cell cellular providers to be deposited in a fund that would carry over from one fiscal year to the next. Um, this would memorialize a practice that has been in place going back to the early 2010s when the leases were initially entered into, where we've been holding the revenue separately. Um, it was uh, only this past year flagged by the Department of Revenue as an issue that required a special act. Um, but it is our recommendation to proceed in that fashion. And, it gives us the maximum flexibility for the use of the proceeds of that fund. Um, as I think you all know, we are using it as a revenue source for on an annual basis in the fiscal year budget, although we don't use the totality of the revenue each year to try to allow for a balance to grow. The exception has been every couple of years when we've had financial difficulty, we've dipped into the fund. Um, that was the case last year, but it is not the request, not, not the case this current fiscal year. Um, we're just using the baseline revenue number. Um, Liz, is there anything you'd like to add on that? No, that, that covers it, Mike. Thank you. Madam Chair, through you, based on all this, our recommendation would be to the board to vote to recommend the article. Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 15, Established Cell Tower Receipts Reserve Fund. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? I have a quick question. What does the fund, what is the reserve fund used for? So the fund would continue to be recommended to be used in the form that it has been in recent years, which is as a, a revenue stream in the fiscal year annual operating budget. Um, you know, we, we, again, we can generate the, um, we can generate the, um, we can generate a surplus 
um, in that that we may choose to use for another purpose, whether it's in the operating budget or for some other purpose, depending upon the, the intention. Um, but it, this would provide us the flexibility to do whatever we feel is appropriate. So it doesn't need a designated purpose. We just have to establish a reserve fund. It doesn't need an amount or a purpose to it. So the, I believe um, if I look at the language here, I'm trying to look where it is here. It's pretty broad. Yeah, yeah it doesn't really say why it's we're doing it's it. Really broad. And, and well, we tried to provide the board maximum flexibility and that's why this is the avenue that we ended up coming to. It gives you ultimately the ability to recommend whatever the appropriate use is. Um, and, and we asked we ask really that it not be limited in the drafting of it. That's why you're seeing it worded in, in this fashion. I'm looking for language that says anything, something like or any valid public purpose, but I'm not seeing it in here. No, just used to assist in funding the cost of town, including municipal and school operations. That's mm -hmm. <laughs> and says within the scope of the general public objectives of this right. commission, yeah. I guess. So that's thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay, my eyes just are not going. Yeah, no, I know. I just was curious why we would have to do this and put it as a reserve fund unless we're utilizing it for you know the you know tech, tech you know it purposes or something like that so i was just curious why we were i know we're sponsoring it i just don't know why <laughs> so the, the the reason is because absent this special act we would need to treat the revenue as an annual revenue and rather than it being set aside for whatever the purpose is, it would ultimately either go into the budget to fund operations or go to free cash and not be designated in a particular area. And as you know, Madam Chair, there's no dedicated expense associated with this that we would yeah. need a stabilization fund. So that really wasn't a tool right. that we thought was the right answer. We talked about that as recently as what this morning, Liz. Um, but I think in the end, this, this gives you the maximum flexibility to utilize the, okay. the, the yeah. funds. You're not accepting it. That's my familiarity with it would be like a gift, accepting it as a gift. And that's the only way to circumvent the general revenue. However, doing a special act is another way to do it. Correct. So, all right. Um, if there's no other questions, thank you for that information. If there's no other questions on Mr. Studo's motion, seconded by Mr. O'Leary. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manu Pelli is aye. Everybody looks asleep and we, we're only halfway through. <laughs> halfway? Article 16. Oh, okay. uh, Article 16, the fiscal year 2022 operating budget as presented by the finance director in the earlier agenda item. Liz, I don't know whether you've uh, identified the, the dollar amounts for municipal school and fixed costs. That may be helpful for the board as it considers its recommendation. Yes, Mike. Um, I just forwarded that to you, um, but I can also read the figures if you would like. That, that would be I'd probably faster. <laughs> sure. So um, at town meeting, you all will recall that you have a motion and in the motion it, it's voted differently. But for tonight's purposes, um, the annual motion for voting the budget is broken out municipal budget um, school budget and then fixed costs but then when we um, get down to the actual motion of the town meeting we need to vote them uh, separately where debt service has a two-thirds vote towards it so I'm just reminding everybody in case you know we get to that point and we have the motions and we're wondering why the, the amounts are different. So I just okay. want everybody to um, recall that. So the total FY22 fixed costs are 22,769,201. So 22,769,201. And the school's FY22 budget is 34,276,665. Three four two seven six 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 five. The total FY twenty two municipal operating budget is eighteen million seventy seven thousand four hundred and one dollars eighteen zero seven seven four zero one. 
for a total of $75,123,267. Madam Chair, the motion would be to move to recommend the fiscal year 2022 operating budget as outlined by the finance director. Okay, do I have a motion, Mr. Studo? Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 16 FY 2022 operating budget as outlined by the finance director. I'll second that. Second motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Manu Pelli is aye. Recommended. Thank you, Madam Chair. Pardon me while I uh, call back up my warrant. Let's see if that works. Okay. Madam Chair, through you, Article 17, fiscal year 2022 fund retirement obligations through you to the finance director. We are looking to fund Article 17 fund retirement obligations in the amount of $200,000 from free cash. Okay, do we have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 17 fund retirement obligations. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Manu Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, through you, Article 18 appropriate funding for the other post employment benefits liability trust fund, through you to the finance director. We are looking to appropriate $300,000 from raise and appropriate. <clears throat> My recommendation be would to vote to recommend. Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 18, appropriate funds to other post-employment benefits liability trust fund. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Mrs. Gonzalez, we can't hear you, but I can see you say aye. <laughs> You're muted. I'm not. Uh, Here we go. Mrs. Gonzalez says aye. Aye. Manu Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, through you, Article 19, transfer funds to the school district reserve fund for unanticipated or unbudgeted -budget, special education out of district or transportation costs. The uh, recommendation uh, to the finance director, I know there's been a lot of moving parts. Do we continue to be <coughs> in a place to recommend $100,000? That is correct from free cash, Michael. Thank you, Madam Chair. So through you, uh, this will be tra transferred into the funds. I would recommend uh, a vote to recommend. Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 19, transfer funds to the school district reserve fund for unanticipated unbudgeted costs for special education, out of district tuition or transportation. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Emmanuel Pelli is aye. Did you hear that better? Yes. yes. Oh, we good. heard you. Yeah. Okay. Madam Chair, through you Article 20, rescinding authorizations to borrow um, through you to the finance director. Um, are there any identified items to be rescinded at this point in time? We could have two potential, but we are waiting for a response from bond council as to if we can do that at this time. As the treasurer collector mentioned, we didn't borrow the full dollar amount for the water meter project or for the town hall boiler project. So we would be looking to rescind the difference and the amount um, that was authorized and, and what we borrowed for as the projects are complete. However, where um, we will not be receiving our funds until May 27th, even though the bonds and bands were sold last week and you, you folks are signing them this evening, 
we are just waiting to see if it if we are allowed to rescind at, at June town meeting. So um, I would hold your vote until town meeting. My recommendation would be to recommend the town meeting. Madam Chair, I move to recommend the town meeting, Article 20, rescind authorization to borrow. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manu Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, through you, Article 21, fiscal year 2022 capital expenditures. You'll see I've highlighted in yellow the articles that were added from the uh, original draft of the warrant sidewalk tree removal, the modified numbers of the Hillview projects, including adding the bunker restructuring project. You've already taken a vote with regard to the plan. Um, the recommendation would be to vote to recommend the article. Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 21 FY 2022 capital expenditures. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Minu Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, through you appropriating money to the participating funding arrangement fund, uh, we are not anticipating a transfer taking place at the June town meeting as it customarily occurs in the October town meeting. and expect that the recommendation will be to pass over the article, but for the time meeting, time being, we are recommending a vote to recommend at town meeting this article. Madam Chair, I move to recommend a town meeting, Article 21, appropriate funds to participating funding arrangement fund. Article 22. 22. 22, sorry. Yeah, I'll second that. <laughs> Thank you. I thought you were testing okay. us. No. <laughs> Uh, this wait. is a, a vote. Wait, 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 time out, time out, back up. No, 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 this is why I misread it. It says Article 21 in the motion by mistake. Uh, I'm reading the motion, so, but it is Article 22. Sorry, I just, we, sorry I about that. I should, I should have caught it. I just, yeah, because we already voted Article 21. <laughs> Correct. So it's <laughs> there twice, but either way, it's 22. All right, so we're going to wait on Mr. Studo's motion to recommend a town meeting seconded by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manu Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, through you, Article 23, Funding Town Building Repairs. We do have a listing of projects that have been provided by the building superintendent, which I will review briefly um, here. If I can manage to share my screen properly. We see a total of $50,000 town hall air conditioning upgrades, uh, which has been an ongoing project um, from um, one year to the next, although we didn't do these last year, if I recall. Um, town hall exterior wall repair and replacement areas where there's timber that's deteriorating and allowing water penetration, that's $10,000. The building on the common is a need for a sump pump in the basement and it is an area where there are items that are stored by a number of community groups. So we're looking to uh, try to address that issue in the amount of $7,000. And um, there's some uh, miscellaneous projects inside the building on the tavern and, and the building on the common to um, ensure greater compliance with the building code. Uh, among them, including railings and interior steps and emergency lighting and signage for $10,500 for a grand total of $50,000. And I believe through you to the finance director, the funding, funding source is contemplated to be free cash. Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 23, Fund Town Building Repairs. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, seconded by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Manny Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, through you, Article 24, appropriating money for special counsel legal expenses. We're not recommending an appropriation at this time, but we'll continue to monitor the progress of the case. And the recommendation would be for a vote to recommend at town meeting this article. Madam Chair, I move to recommend a town meeting, 
Article 24, appropriate money for special counsel legal expenses. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Manny Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, through you, Article 25, appropriating money for legal expenses with the 20 Elm Street litigation. Um, we are recommending funding in the amount of $100,000 with a funding source being free cash. And the recommendation would be to vote to recommend the article. Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 25, appropriate money for legal expenses, 20 Elm Street litigation. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Just a quick question. <laughs> Mr. Walner. Yeah, didn't we, I, I think we appropriated before like a hundred, hundred and fifty thousand. And have we already burned through that, I guess is my question. No, I'm so wrong. Madam Chair, through you, we have a, a balance of $184,000 roughly um, at this point in time on this. Uh, this would be for additional funding to secure our position as we go through the case uh, with the Housing Appeals Committee and uh, any other future uh, action. So our fund will be $284,000. Correct, yes. And that, that feels wise to do that at this, at this point? Uh, I mean, in, in my opinion, you know, we, we're in a spot where we have the funding available in, in free cash. The article was able to survive over multiple fiscal years. And, um, you know, my feeling was that it would continue to put us in the strongest position and, you know, if we, you know end up, you know, not needing to expend all those funds. You have the ability to um, reappropriate the funding um, at a later point in time. But you know, where the funding is on hand, it seemed like uh, an appropriate step. Okay, thank you. I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? And seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Manu Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, through you, Article 26, amending the code to add the school rental revolving fund. And I know each time this has come up, I have botched the the description of it and confuse it with another article. So I hope I don't do that here this evening. Um, so this would be to modify our bylaws to add a school rental revolving fund approved at a previous town meeting with the school committee being authorized um, to expend funding out of the fund. And um, we are uh, recommending that the board vote to recommend the article. <clears throat> Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 26, Amend Code of North Reading, Chapter 66, Finance, Add School Rental Revolving Fund. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Um, any further discussion? I have a fat, fast question. Who, who manages that reserve account? Keep, I believe keep the tally book comes in and what's getting used. Through you, Madam Chair, I believe it'll be the Assistant Superintendent for Finance and Operations. Um, Liz, is that your understanding? That is correct. And it's meant to, for use to offset their operational costs, right? At for maintenance point. of school facilities, correct. I, I will say that, you know, this was originally, this program that called for this, this actual article was intended to be relying on the rental of space in the form of uh, solar panels for energy generation. The market has proved not to be favorable at this point in time for that. So um, they may revisit it at a later point in time. But nonetheless, we wanted to really make sure that we shored up the authorization so that when, when and if that time comes, the school committee is able to act quickly. Thank you. And OK. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. <clears throat> Aye. And Manu Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, through you, this is the uh, same school rental revolving fund that we just discussed, Article 27, um, as it was discussed in Article 26, I should say. Article 27, this would be to establish a dollar amount, which we anticipate recommending at $125,000. <clears> and our recommendation would be to vote to recommend the article. This is not an appropriation, but is simply setting the maximum expenditures out of the fund. Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 27, establish dollar amount for school rental revolving fund at $125,000. Second. 
Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary? Aye. Mr. Walner? Aye. Mr. Studo? Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez? Aye. Manny Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, through you, um, I know the finance director has been in the midst of reviewing the performance of the various revolving funds. Um, I don't believe uh, that the review has concluded, although we are hopeful that it will conclude before town meeting. So we would recommend that the board vote to recommend uh, at town meeting this article. Okay. Madam Chair, <clears throat> excuse me. I move to recommend at town meeting article 28 Amend dollar amounts for various revolving funds. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo. Second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Manu Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, through you, Article 29 would be an amendment to our zoning bylaws adding the regulation of small cell wireless facilities. Um, I believe you have received a presentation and a recommendation from the Planning Commission that are both favorable for this bylaw. Um, and um, so if the board is so inclined to take a position, uh, it may, may wish to recommend the article. I think we've discussed in a previous meeting that there is anticipated to be a separate policy that the select board would also be working on, um, which would govern um, the um, placement of such facilities on public property, particularly in the, in the right of way um, on telephone poles or otherwise. Um, you know, this is something that we've been watching, uh, I think, for probably 18 months at this point in time. And um, we've, you know, through the town planner and the planning commission, gotten it to a point where we have action that we're, we can recommend that will um, regulate these facilities should they come to town here in North Reading. And it's the board's prerogative whether it chooses to recommend, not recommend, or, um, or um, recommend a town meeting. Um, I think that there's been a sufficient amount of feedback and I think that my opinion is we're in a position to recommend it at this point if the board's so inclined. Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 29, amend code zoning bylaws, add, add section small cell wireless facilities. Second. second. Motion by Mr. Strudo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Manny Pelli is aye. <clears throat> Madam Chair, through you, Article 30. Um, this is the Senior Housing Overlay Zoning District, which we've had um, a number of conversations about amongst the board and with the Planning Commission, the town planner, and the developer and his representatives. Um, so, um, through you, Madam Chair, I declare the board as to its intent at this point in time, but you have heard a recommendation from the Planning Commission. Um, we have a motion. Yep, yeah, Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 30, amend code, addition of Senior Housing Overlay Zoning District. A second for the purposes of discussion. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Just uh, again, I'm inclined to, to, to support, but I would like to see some of what was discussed this evening incorporated into the, uh, the main motion. Um, so maybe it's gonna change a little bit before town meeting. Uh, either things are gonna be incorporated or not incorporated. And uh, I'd like to see what the final proposal is. So again, my inclination is to be supportive, but I'd like to see uh, some of the other suggestions incorporated into the main motion. Um, Mr. O'Leary, and specifically being the North Reading resident preference. Some of the resident preference stuff, yeah, incorporated okay. into it. So okay. I mean, you know, like I said, uh, I'm inclined to, to be supportive, but um, I think it helps them at the deal. Let's put it that way. And so maybe we want to just make a recommendation to town meeting with a strong indication right now, publicly that things are looking pretty good. Okay, so Mr. Any other input, Mr. Walner? Yeah, I, I, I agree with that as well. There's there's no harm in us recommending it to town meeting, and uh, you know I like the project as well, but I think we have to really put teeth into that local preference. Mm -hmm. uh, we weren't getting, you know, I wasn't getting solid answers from CPC, so. 
this just keeps a little pressure on them to do more. Okay, Mr. Stewart, any input? Yeah, no, same thing as Mr. Lou and Mr. Wallner. Just with the added caveat that if the, we should have the local preference. However, again, if for whatever reason we come up with some legal obstacles, which was one of the questions that's been kind of hanging over how forceful we can be with that local preference, that, that you know, that that should be taken into account. So, but I do agree that there's no, Again, I just said recommend, like what Mr. O'Leary said, just to get the discussion going. I didn't necessarily, you know, reading the article. So, but I, I don't think it's uh, a bad thing to wait till the meeting. Okay, Mrs. Gonzalez. Um, I I would agree with my colleagues. Uh, so, Madam Chair, I'd like to withdraw my second. Thank you. Motion fails. Do we have another motion? Yes, Madam Chair, I move to recommend the town meeting Article 30, amend code addition of senior housing overlaid zoning district. I'll second that. Motion by Mr. Studo to recommend a town meeting, seconded by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Hi. Mr. Walner, did you have something? I was just going to say, just I, they can do commercially whatever they want. It's not a legal issue on that issue. It's only on the 40B part. That, that the legal issues come in. On a commercial side, you can do whatever you want. It's not a 40 d project, so I don't think we're gonna have to worry about that part. Anyways. Um, I also don't see an issue legally with putting that into the overlay because it, 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 it's our zoning. It's a local, it's local, locally regulated. And even his presentation, mm -hmm. you know, reflects that. So if our whole purpose of agreeing, yes, we want this overlay is to provide provide more housing for, for our seniors and our residents. I don't see why, I'm accepting, accepting out the low income, which runs by its own regulations, but uh, the rest of it should be a, you know, kind of, that's, a, that's part of our, that's part of the enticement of the whole project, so. Okay. All right, so. And I, which is. Okay, a so we're back to the <laughs> motion to recommend, so. Mr. O'Leary was an I. Mr. Walner, Mr. Studo, I don't think we recorded your vote yet. Uh, aye. Mrs. Gonzalez? Aye. And Manu Pellings is aye. So we'll recommend a town meeting in the hopes that there'll be some consideration for those type of amend amendments to the language. Madam Chair, through you, Article 31, citizen's petition to amend the zoning bylaws for um, the property formerly known as Seven Acres Poultry Farm on Concord Street. Um, through you, Madam Chair, I see the town planner is still here this evening. Are you still there, Danielle? I am. Thank you. Just to clarify, did the Planning Commission, has the Planning Commission voted to recommend this article? They have not yet. Uh, they will probably be doing so at town meeting. Okay. And Madam Chair, through you, the board may wish to take that, you know, advisement and, and proceed similarly. Um, you know, but uh, certainly it's, you know, the board's preference. Okay. So recommend a town meeting? Uh, that'd be my recommendation, but certainly if the board, you know, feels that it, you know, wishes to act strongly. I mean, we know, I think it was pretty well known what the, what the intention was of the, <laughs> The buyer uh, the came to light at the, at the August town meeting last year, but certainly the benefit of a recommendation of the planning commission might be helpful. Okay. Is, is, prerogative, is, there, Mr. Leary? is there going to be a presentation um, by the petitioner before the planning commission or before this board? As far as again, I don't know if the plans have changed or not, uh, just what the intentions are, or are they still the same? Madam Chair, through you to the town planner, um, would you be able to respond? I believe they are still the same. Um, the last presentation we had was um, April 6th was the public hearing on this article and there was no, um, there's been no further presentation, though the applicant did indicate to us that they were interested in getting some renderings and some basic plans together, but it has not been before the planning commission. Is it the intention of the the administration and the chair maybe to offer some agenda time at our next meeting. And again, this is just to bring everybody up to date. Uh, it's been several months and 
since we were on the football field. <laughs> so. I didn't have that intention. I don't. I. I mean, I, I think it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory what he has asked to do there and he needs a zoning change and he was pretty clear and direct about it. So, um, Mr. Studo has your hand, have you have your hand raised? Yeah, and again, I mean, I'll, I'll read the motion. However, you know, we'll do the recommended town meeting, but I would like to add that I feel like the voters spoke on this already. Well, the ones that showed up at uh, town meeting. So again, it's something where, I mean, Mr. Coviello stood up against the objection of select board and CPC and, you know, straight out said, I want to buy to put a building. So again, I would be, I'm ready to recommend it now, just based on the fact that the voters told me what they thought about it, but I am willing to wait till recommend a town meeting if that's, you know, what the majority wants to do. Okay. Mr. Walner? Well, um, you know, I, I said from the very beginning that I didn't think the town should buy that property, but I also said that I didn't think the town should be changing its bylaw. He bought it as is. Whatever he wants to do with it is up to him. But I never thought, I never would be recommending a change in bylaw. And he even uh, said something about giving some section of that to Parks and Rec, which I haven't heard a word of since. So just because he, just because the town voted to um, not buy that property doesn't mean that also meant that they wanted to change the bylaw. I, I don't see that connection at all. So I'm going to be voting against this. I might plan to vote against this. Mr. O'Lear. Yeah, I, again, I just think uh, if we, we have another meeting before town meeting, I, I think we should pro provide an opportunity for the citizens petitioner again to come before us, make his presentation. Uh, and again, to, to Mr. Studo's point, you know, the majority of people that were at the town meeting voted to purchase the, the farm. It just didn't achieve a two thirds vote. And more than substantial majority voted in favor of it. If you're looking at so what the general populace was thinking about, more people went there to buy it than not buy it. So we just didn't achieve two thirds. We got a significant majority. We fell 20, 22 votes short or something like that. But that being said, um, you know, then it's up to town meeting to decide whether they want to rezone it or not. I think Mr. Calviello should be given an opportunity to come and um, explain once again, you know, what his intentions are now that he has purchased it, as opposed to the town not purchasing it and mm -hmm. see if the plans have changed. It just provides another opportunity for the public to become better informed, uh, okay. myself included. So maybe we can see if they're willing to, to do that. And so recommend a town meeting is the... Is the yeah, I'm in favor option. of recommending a town meeting, but I think we should provide the opportunity for them to come and make a presentation. Okay. All okay. right. Mrs. Okay. Gonzalez? I'm ready to vote now. And, and, and if you don't, in, in favor of it? Mm -hmm. Okay. And... Um, There isn't a recommendation yet from planning on this. No. And is there a reason why? Adam Schiff, will you to the town planner? There wasn't a consensus on the board of enough being strongly in favor of it. Um, at least one member was opposed. They wanted to wait to hear. Um, just further um, how how the discussion played out at the public hearing for warrant articles. Um, we did also mention to the applicant that that, that that meeting is happening on May 24th, and I think there may have been some expectation that they would be able to present at that meeting. So I think it would be a good idea to offer them the opportunity if, um, you know, if, if that does work, because they know that that night um, the warrant, the, the public hearings would be held. So they may wish to say something that night. Okay. All right. M Mr. Studo. And um, uh, Danielle, if that, if on the 24th, if Ms. Coviello comes, is there any way someone from the CPC can be there? Because I think something like this, like, I, I really do think their opinion would matter and just give us some guidance because, I mean, uh, 
the select board is then if we can't get an opinion, I mean, we're going to be flying blind from what the CPC thinks up until discussion starts at town meeting. So, I mean, if, if someone could come and comment on this, I mean, it, it, it's, it's really, you know, I, I think it will, it will, it would help me because I was at that meeting, Danielle, that you're referencing and I kind of left where it's like, all right, well, I guess I'll hear something before we have to decide on select board. And, you know, that time is, well, now coming. So I don't know if there's something where you can pass on if someone can be uh, on that meeting from CPC to at least give an opinion of some point. I would find it helpful anyways. I can pass that along. Um, I know they do intend to be at the, the May 24th meeting um, just because it's the, the public hearings on the warrant articles. But I can pass that along. Okay. All right. So I think we need to move this along. But okay, Mr. Mr. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. O'Leary. Yeah. No, I, I think it's incumbent upon the Planning Commission to make a recommendation. It's a suggested change in the zoning bylaws. It's clearly within their jurisdiction and domain. And I certainly would like to, uh, to hear the recommendation, you know, right. prior right. to the board making a, taking a position yeah. on it. Because again, it is certainly within their domain. And, um, you know, if we could post a joint meeting and they want to make a recommendation that night, that'll be helpful. Okay, thank you. So, and just from the chair, I would, I was ready to vote in favor of this, recommending this, but I can understand my colleagues, um, my colleagues, your hesitation with regard to this. I sort of agree with what Mr. Studo said. I mean, I understand what you're saying, Mr. O'Leary, but there weren't enough people even in that area that showed up to vote at the town meeting when the question of us acquiring the farm was raised. So I agree with Mr. Sue, the lack of people at the town meeting was enough for me to say that, you know, that there isn't much of a, there isn't much of a concern at all with regard to what Mr. Caviello, Caviello wants to, to do there. And he's been pretty upfront about what he wants to use it for. So I'd be in favor of the petition to amend the zoning and, but at the same time, I can hear my colleagues concerns and I agree that, you know, certainly we should have the way in a, a planning board on this. Um, so, so, maybe, so we'll, oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Mr. Sudo. No, I was going to say like, then it just seems like recommended town meeting. Town yeah, meeting. And, then, and then we'll follow along this course of asking the petitioner to come in and do a brief presentation and ask for a, a recommendation from planning as well on the, on the, um, on the article. So, so we could see what's, so then we may be able to, you know, have a more informed vote. All right. So, so did we make a motion? No, but I will. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Madam chair, I move to recommend the town meeting article 31 citizens petition amend zoning bylaws Map 18, parcels 13, 14, and 15. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo to recommend a town meeting, seconded by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manu Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, through you, Article 32 would be to amend the zoning map to reflect the changes contemplated in Article 31. Based on the board's previous vote, my recommendation would be to vote to recommend a town meeting this article. Motion. Madam Chair, I move to recommend a town meeting, Article 32, amend code zoning bylaw section 200-30 zoning map, 412 and 14 Concord Street. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manu Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, through you, um, I believe when we get to the next agenda item, there is a motion to vote to sign the town meeting warrant. Okay. So let's see here. After all of that, I hope we are favorable. Act favorable. <laughs> That's order of business. Well, I was going to say we we voted unanimously on all thirty two articles, so that's a good that's a good sign. Um, 
So our next order of business is to uh, vote to sign the June 5th, 2021 town meeting warrant. Do I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to sign the June 5th, 2021 town meeting warrant. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Manny Pelli is aye. Next order of business is to set the strategic planning and upcoming meeting schedule. And just in this regard, we, we always had the strategic planning meeting in person. So I don't know if there's a capability to do that. Of course, I, we're all mindful of, you know, health and safety, including the health and safety of people in the building and, and elsewhere. But I don't know if there's a capability for, for us to meet in person, Mr. Gilberto. Um, Madam Chair, through you, we historically have not had a, um, you know, a large crowd for the strategic planning meeting. So I think it's, you know, on, on the scale, it's one that's, you know, more likely to be successful in person than, for example, some of like even this evening's meeting where we had 25 mm -hmm. people, you know, show up. Um, I can tell you, and I, you know, I was going to speak to it later on, you know, we are looking to uh, opening the town hall for walk-in service beginning um, a week from today, uh, Monday. May 17th, be limited hours um, in the mornings, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and in the afternoons on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So you know, here in this building, we're working in that direction towards in-person things. Um, you know, but that said, I, I certainly would defer to the board as to its preferences. And there's also the matter of dates as well. Um, we do have another busy few weeks coming up with meetings. Yeah. And you'll see that when we talk about the meeting schedule. So um, you know, I don't know whether there's going to be a need for two regular meetings in June, particularly with the early town meeting. Um, you could use one of those dates if you wanted to, and um, you could go from there. Okay. Um, I, I would say that if we're meeting in person, we likely would not be in the smaller room that we're normally in. We probably would look to, to do something either in room 14 or in the gym. I have a... Mr. Studo? Would the strategic planning meeting, well, what's the month that it would happen in? It customarily has occurred in September or October. Okay, so I have a pretty, then then here's um, here's my thought. Unless something dramatic happens as of mid-July, because I think the governor is going to move up at, by two weeks, August 1st, we're going to be fully open without any restrictions. To me, as soon as that happens, I don't think... I, I don't even think this should be a discussion of whether this happens in person. If I can go to a bar with a thousand of my closest friends, I can meet with you. So that's my opinion. I think we, I mean, if, if it's in September, then in my opinion, not having it in person, I mean, by then I expect us, these meetings to be back in person way before then. So the strategic planning meeting, I see no reason to even attempt to schedule something that's not in person. Okay, unless but we we're not scheduling idea. it for September. We missed it last September. So we wanna we wanna focus in on that. Oh, okay. But I thought so we can said. get back into into order on our strategic planning mission because we so missed it. We're not it. doing September. Oh, no, that's why I asked the TA, Madam Chair, and he said September. That's yeah, what I was no, no. We're trying to. to schedule it now for the one that we missed six, seven months ago. So okay. <laughs> so if we can put some, we can lock in some dates for next meetings and then lock in some availability of the members for the strategic planning. And, and then I think my question to Mr. Gilberto was just, just the logistics of it. And if, that, if it's possible, I'm sure we're going to be meeting again before we have the strategic planning meeting. It's not something we're gonna be doing this weekend. So let's, why don't we why don't we focus in on the the meeting schedule moving ahead and Mr. Gilberto, do you have any anything proposed for that we have yes the, the board scheduled to meet May 24th for a regular meeting it will include the warrant article hearing for June town meeting our recommendation was going to be to um, schedule a virtual meeting um, for the morning of Friday June 4th which is the day before town meeting for any remaining business that uh, may not be addressed and that may save us the, the challenge of having to meet in person on the field at town meeting. I chose the Friday because it just seems to often be the day that board members are available. 
Um, but we could we can have that meeting happen at any point in time. And, and honestly, if the board wanted to elect to meet in person on the field right prior to town meeting, it could also do that. Um, but I just put that out there as a suggestion. Saturday, June 5th is the date of the town meeting, um, which will begin at nine o'clock in the morning on the turf field. And then if we were to go with the first and third customary meeting schedule uh, for Mondays, it would be June 7th and 21st. So I put those out there for discussion. And then we can decide how the board wants to handle the July and August meetings, or it could de delay doing that until a future meeting. Okay. So, so far I have the 24th and the 5th. So we want to do Friday morning or, or earlier before the meeting on the 5th. Can the members make it earlier before the meeting on the 5th? Okay. Yes. Do you want us? To, can all all of you make? Can we all make it there? This is this is Saturday morning or Friday morning? Saturday morning. So that would be in person, Madam Chair. Through you. Yes. On the field at town at, at town right before town meeting. Mm -hmm. I'm good. I can do that. Mr. Studer, you go with mm -hmm. that. Mr. O'Leary, you go with that. I think that's fine. Do we want to say eight a.m. 8.15. I'll be there earlier than that. So it doesn't well, matter. The town meeting starts at what, 10? At 9. Nine. Oh, nine. It's at 9. Oh, okay. 9. Oh, I had 10. Good thing we talked about this. <laughs> so we wanted to get going because of the risk of, you know, potential yeah. warmer temperatures. You better go for 8. Yeah. 8 o'clock. I'm, I'm going to say 8.15 eight. then. We'll meet at 8.15. Does that I work, Mr. That. Gilberto? That's whatever the board's preference. Okay. You could also set the time once you have your next meeting, you know, when you have a better idea of what's left to be dealt with. Sure, sure. All right, so why don't we schedule that? We'll say, we'll hold it, hold it at eight for the moment, yeah. okay? Because the last 15 minutes is gonna be gone. People are gonna be coming, talking, stuff like that. It'll be hard to do it. Okay. All right, so that covers the final votes that we need to take in the town meeting. And then beyond that in June, we'll have the 7th and the 21st, Mr. Gilberto? That would be the customary meeting dates according to the, to the board's policy. And there's uh, no, no known conflicting holidays um, to my end. Okay, and are the mem I know it's hard to ask this right now, but are the members available for those two days in June? Yep. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not available the week before the 21st or whatever that, the 13th on, I'm not. Madam Chair, could I make a suggestion? Sure. The 7th may not be necessary if it's right after town meeting. We could make that our strategic meeting. Okay. And Mr. O'Leary said you're not available on the 14th? Correct. Okay. So would that work, Mr. Gilberto? Sure. It's whatever the board starts. Yeah. Okay. I would just say, you know, for those who are are, are watching that there may be other boards and committees that are, are you know are going to be looking to meet in person. And we, we're not not quite there in terms of being able to accommodate every meeting. Um, again, as I, as I noted, this is one that's a smaller one. I, I know, Mr. Walden, you've mentioned the Forest Committee as well. I think that they're a great candidate to meet in person as well, if we can find the right room, because they don't generally have a large crowd. Yeah. So I just, if there's other folks watching, I just want to make sure they know we, we still have some work to do before we can say all the meetings are going to be happening in person. This just happens to be a meeting that traditionally does not get, you know, gather a large crowd. Well, I, I personally am uh, still a little bit concerned as far as meeting in person, because again, I, I don't know what everybody else's status is, but I'm fully vaccinated and I'm not uh, going to get to Mr. Studo's point when everything's open up and go to, I, I go to a bar with a thousand other people there, you know, uh, but that's a choice I get to make. Uh, and I think the choices still have to be available. And I think 
you know, without getting into anybody's personal business at this particular point in time, I would like to know who's going to be attending and again, whether they've been fully vaccinated or not before I put myself and my family or anybody else at risk. So. Okay. We're getting very close yet. We're getting very close. And to me, yeah. it's, yeah, we, okay. shouldn't, we shouldn't rush it. We shouldn't rush okay. things unnecessarily. Okay. And I think too, if we do host a meeting in person, we would have to make it, we would have to stream it live to be able to be accessible to others, you know, that we're not, we don't necessarily, we might be able to meet, but not have others attending the meeting under the current, unless that gets changed, but we'd have to make it so that they can see and hear us and, you know, watch the meeting. So somehow live stream it. And again, I, I would like to, I think the board members should have options too. Is that how it was in the past? Did we stream it? I remember, I don't remember that. No, we met in person, the last one we met in person. Right. And the only other one that you used to attend was Bob Terozo, Maureen. Yeah. Someone from the paper was there with that was us. Because we, that's because we used to feed them. It know? was just. We used to get fed too. <laughs> And we didn't. Was, and we didn't meet on a Monday. We met at the community room the last time we did it in the police station. So was the police station. Yes, we and didn't even have Jane with us. Michael took the notes. Yeah. Yeah. So it, was, it ended up being kind of private, to be honest. And it, it was, was private. Yeah. First, more strategic. It's not that anybody couldn't attend, but just the fact that it wasn't on a Monday and it wasn't a different location and yeah. there was no virtual at that point. You know, you had to really want to be there to be there. I guess. Yeah. Okay. And also, Mr. O'Leary, I understand what you said about like, we all have to be comfortable. I, but I think I mentioned a couple meetings ago that I just don't want to get caught flat footed if the governor, if they rescind that you're allowed to do this by Zoom. And then it becomes a, hey, guess what? Uh, yeah, next week you have to come in. Because I, I feel like the way everything's happened with the reopening has been that on Sunday, you think one thing is happening. And on Monday morning, you read on Boston.com that, oh, yeah, by the way, this this lockdown provision is no longer necessary. So that's all I'm saying. I, I, I don't know if we'll get advance notice, if anybody can answer that question, but no, that's my I, fear. I, I, yeah, no, I think what, uh, you know, what, what needs to happen is, is if this temporary situation, which allows us to meet in this venue, you know, finally gets suspended and is run its course, you know, that's when things are truly opened up, right? Okay, uh, and, and again, makes sense. You know, uh, you know, how soon that's going to be, I don't know. Because again, it comes down to comfort level for, and again, it's across the Commonwealth, across the country, you know, as to whether or not people are ready to uh, venture out as much as others, you know? And, uh, you know, to me, I've been uh, pretty cautious and uh, along with a lot of other people. And I think the end is, is coming closely and quickly, but again, mm -hmm. I don't want to be stupid about it either. You know, so again, if it's a, uh, uh, if the governor finally rescinds the special act here in relation to or the legislature, you know, re meeting remotely, live streaming as we're doing, you know, that's one situation that they'll have to deal with it. Um, or if it's going to be a hybrid, then it's going to be a hybrid. It's up to the individual members to make a conscious decision as to where they want to be in person or not. So we'll see how you we'll see how it unfolds. I just don't want to. I don't want to rush it either. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to designate the. Seventh is our strategic planning meeting. We're going to have a meeting scheduled on the 21st, the 5th of July. And I know this is hard to plan out with the summertime because, because the end is near. People are probably going to start to travel or take a vacation here and there. So the 5th is Independence Day uh, celebrated. So we'll, do the members have the 12th and the 26th? And Mr. Gilberto, do you have those dates available? Can we wait on July, see what business is available? Again, I, I don't know. I mean, we can put it down, but it's, uh, you know, I mean, do we usually do two in July? I don't remember last year doing two, unless it was warranted, but. Well, last year was different. I mean, yeah, I mean some years we do, some years we don't. It depends upon everybody's schedule and, oh. and the business at hand and whether or not, sometimes we reserve the opportunity if something comes up, the administration needs, needs the board to meet, we'll, okay. we'll do it. But 
So can we like choose the dates, but then if there's nothing going on, just not do it? Is that yeah. okay? Yeah, that's that too. All right. I'm... As Mr. Gilbert, I was pretty good about letting us know there's a light agenda, or maybe not a necessity to have the meeting, but I'm just trying to say some. If and and then we we might be able to do that. I'm just trying to. I know it's hard to plug the dates in, but we usually we usually do meet twice a month. So. I don't know what your thought is, Mr. Gilberto. Do you want to wait on July or? No, uh, it's up to the board members. Uh, I can tell you that um, I would, I am not available on the 19th, but it looks like the 12th and the 26th, I, I, I would be available for. Okay. So maybe we just pick, pick one date in July and one day in August to cover at least meeting at least once during those two months. Okay. Does everybody have the 12th available? Yes. Yeah. Birthday. All right. I haven't been told by my social <laughs> director yet. I know. Uh, you have hope, a birthday hopefully off? not, right? Hopefully you'll, you will yeah. be going somewhere. It would be nice, but let's plug that in. And as we arrive to the date, if it becomes a problem I, and we can be flexible. And Mr. Sure. O'Leary, that makes two of us, by the way, I heard your comment. So I'm, uh, yeah, I haven't, I haven't received my July schedule that, you know, it's a whiteboard that, you know, it's only, I only get 30 days in advance notice <laughs> right there by the refrigerator. Well, we'll, we'll tentatively hold on to July 12th and how does, how is Mr. Gilberto, what do you want to recommend after that? August 2nd. My um, my social director has previously told me my August schedule, but I don't remember it. <laughs> so, <laughs> unfortunately, I'm, I I know I, I know I'm traveling at one point in August. I don't I just don't know the date offhand. Um, How about if we let's keep it to let's keep it through that date, and then we can revisit this the calendar. Okay. We're obviously being too ambitious here. <laughs> All right. So we have, a, we have, well, at least we have a firm date for strategic plan, which is great. And then moving on, moving along with the couple of meetings. All right. So let's move on to the next order of business, which is legal bills. So what do you have? The, you have the 12th or do you, you put down the second also? No, just the, no, just through July, just through July 12th. All right. All right. So you get the, uh, you get the fifth, which is town meeting, 8 a.m. You've got the seventh strategic plan. You've got the 21st and then July 12th, correct? That's what I have. Yep. yep. Okay. That's All right. Yeah. All set. We will move on to the next order, which is legal bills. Madam Chair, I move to approve legal bills for March 2021 in the amount of $12,318.60 as follows. General 72-2910. Labor 3393, 20 Elm 1696.50 for a total of 12318.60. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Minnie Pelli is aye. Madam Chair, I move to approve the April 12, 21 regular session minutes as written. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Nanny Pelley is aye. Madam Chair, I move to approve the April 12, 2021 executive session minutes as written. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? <clears throat> Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manny Pelli is aye. Town Administrator's Report, Mr. Gilberto. Madam Chair, through you, in response to the board's request, I reached out to Reading Municipal Light Department regarding the issue of biomass and I attached a memorandum from RMLD's general manager on the matter. Um, we do anticipate having RMLD attend a June board meeting. We will ask them about attending on uh, June 21st for a general update, including on this issue of biomass. 
Um, but if the board members haven't had an opportunity, the last page of the packet is that memorandum from, um, from Ms. O'Brien, the general manager. Secondly, uh, the COVID-19 data report from the Massachusetts Department of Health weekly report was as follows. The risk, risk level for North Ready continues to be yellow. Our cases in the last 14 days was 46 cases with a percent positivity in the last 14 days at 2.42%. Our rate per 100,000 is 19.7 and the total case count was 1,423. Um, I can tell you that we met this morning, the COVID-19 group um, and the public health nurse reported that uh, she was monitoring approximately 25 cases, may have been more like 27 or 28 cases, um, but um, not all of them were, um, were active positive cases. She was monitoring a couple of families as well. Um, so I, I think the numbers continue to be moving in the right direction. Um, I think notably the superintendent reported, uh, if I heard him correctly, that we had not had a, a single positive case in the schools going back to the 1st of May. Um, so knock on wood on that, uh, things seem to be going um, going well there. Um, I mentioned uh, earlier in the meeting that we are looking um, at uh, reopening um, for walk-in hours on a limited basis here in the town hall beginning one week from today. Um, so that's something that uh, we're all working eagerly towards. And um, you know, we'll look to evaluate how that goes over the coming weeks, um, the coming days and weeks um, once uh, in place. And I, I just want to recognize the town hall employees have all been providing some feedback and insight about things that we uh, should be mindful of and, and be prepared to address along the way um, as we uh, look at that. And I think you probably all have heard or seen in the past uh, 48 hours that the library similarly is gonna be reopening for scheduled browsing visits uh, this Wednesday, May 12th. Um, the Edith O'Leary Senior Center uh, will continue to offer uh, in-person appointments um, as necessary, um, uh, scheduled in advance. They've been doing that for a number of months, so including for tax preparation purposes or for other resources, so that will continue to be the case. Don't quite have a timeline yet on uh, gatherings or, or in-person events at the Senior Center um, beyond that, but we'll continue to work towards that as conditions um, you know, permit. Um, and I, I just, I know I said it kind of quickly earlier in the meeting when we we're talking about the um, borrowing, but um, it was certainly some good news to see our bond rating uh, affirmed by Moody's. Um, you know, I do think that, you know, we should be looking in the future towards, um, you know, what, where our strengths are, where our weaknesses are, and how we can, we can get, um, you know, make a stronger case. And I think it will, um, it will come in the form of looking at our budget and trying to adjust things, um, you know, so that we're accounting for the revenues and the expenses um, maybe a bit more closely, but not having to rely on that transfer from the free cash that we've been utilizing the past few years in the budget. So we'll continue to work on that with the financial planning team. And I believe that concludes uh, updates on my end for this evening, Madam Chair. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, just a comment. Thank you for following up with uh, Reading Municipal Light and I look forward to having them come speak to us. It's great, thank you. Yep. No All set? Okay, now board member reports, Mr. O'Leary. Um, just that uh, Hillview is, continues to be um, busy, not just in relation with golf, but also as far as the facility itself and trying to uh, attract uh, some people to, to operate the pub. Again, it's been a challenge. Uh, and there's been discussions with the town administrator just as recently as this week that uh, potentially going back out to bid uh, request, getting requests for proposals for the license agreement. Um, so the discussion about that's still ongoing. Just want the board members to be aware that uh, you know, the commission is looking at uh, various different alternatives in relation to contracting all the licensing, the timing of the licensing and what are we really looking for? And depending upon what that brings in, you know, again, looking at, you know, what do we really want to do with the facility looking forward? So um, a lot of discussion, a lot of activity and uh, other than that, uh, nothing else to report at this time on the board member reports. Thanks, Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Astuto? Um, I, I, I have nothing. It's been uh, all quiet on my front with, uh, well, you heard the CPC stuff. Um, one question though from Mr. O'Leary, is the pub uh, plug and play? Like meaning if it goes out to bid, once we agree, is it ready to go for whoever comes in? Well, initially they were just trying to get someone to come in. Yeah, it's pretty much a turnkey <clears throat> operation um, depending upon the vendor themselves. But for the most part, it's a turnkey operation. Um, 
initially what they were looking for was just a short term this season, getting through it, feeling our way through in relation to, you know, how many people can actually gather in a place and, and mm-hmm. uh, just trying to service the, the golfers that are there. Um, they had four people come in, take a look at it. Uh, but again, it was uh, common theme was it was just a short term here in order to make the investment and get people get staffing for restaurant businesses is very difficult. And that's a challenge for them. Um, but then a couple of them really expressed an interest in, a, in the five year looking, looking at a five year deal, including the, the function hall, because what the commissioner originally went out for was just the pub, not the function hall you can't have functions up there anyway but a couple of people were interested in the whole package so with that kind of interest they thought uh, they would engage in some conversation with the administrator and myself and then the commission was going to meet uh, the other night which i didn't get to attend and uh, but it looks like they're going to go go out and solicit for a longer term to see what the response is and then what that response what response is generated will determine what they look forward going forward Thank you. Okay. Mr. Walner? Um, yeah, just briefly, the uh, Martin's Pond Committee is meeting with the Conservation Commission to, to make another step forward before they do herbicide in the pond. So we're on track. They're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, they're narrowing down their vendor because things have changed, uh, but we're looking good there. Um, and then, Michael, I'll come back to you about the Forest Committee because not everybody can do virtual meetings and it is a very small group. So they're really desperate to get going and they haven't been able to do anything. Um, so I'll come back to you on that. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Studo didn't mention it, but I did attend the Carpenter Drive public hearing meeting and there was a number of people who attended that. Um, I think there's maybe 40, Mr. Sudo, feel free to uh, fill in, but I think there's 40, 45 people on that call. A lot of them were neighbors, and it's all about that property that the town owns. That uh, CPC brought forward four different concepts about how to develop that land and trying to get some um, response from people. And there was a significant amount of neighbors um, who had a lot of opinions and thoughts about how to do that. And I think we have, as a board, have been I have received at least three letters about that, um, you know, and expressing some resistance. So anyways, um, it was good to hear the community output about it. Um, you know, they're just concerned about that, but I come to realize that personally, um, while I at this point don't have a direct responsibility, I just don't know visually what people are talking about. So I'm planning to do a visit out there. And I, I don't think this poses any rules, but if, if someone wanted to join me, I was thinking of getting one or two of these people to actually kind of take me on a tour and show me what's going on because it's a big project. It'd be something, again, it falls in line with things we want to do. And I'm going to plan to go visit. And if somebody wanted to join me, they're welcome to. If not, I'll just do it independently unless I'm breaking some sort of rule. Um, uh, but it, there was a lot of interest. I was surprised at how many people showed up for that because it wasn't well advertised as far as I could tell. Um, and then the other thing, I'll just ask Leon to comment on. Uh, Ms. Gonzalez, if you comment on, we continue to get letters about trash and recycling, and I'm just, just to get an update from you when you talk about what's going on with that, because like potholes, town seems to be really uh, focused on this, and we should be as responsive as we possibly can. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Gonzalez. Um, yeah, so I, I didn't really have any updates, but um, I will respond to Mr. Walner. Um, um, the TA and I have had discussions about that very recently. Um, it, we're just going to go forward, like we said, um, the, the, the contract is the contract, but we can still look at um, stickers just doing it in a different way. There's different ideas, um, still having a two trash limit, but anything beyond that, having a sticker to pay for the extra trash, um, just different ideas like that. Um, as far as the other stuff, it's a little more complicated and I would turn that over to the TA to comment on that. Um, which part? Which part? 
Uh, it's the trash, it's the municipal potholes, the potholes that trash of Carpenter Drive. <laughs> I think you were referring to the yeah. municipality part of it, Mr. Walner, and the school. I was giving it as an example. People get really worked up about potholes, right? Oh, and right. I didn't realize how much people get worked up about trash. You know, okay. All it's right. A, it's become a big issue. So that's <laughs> that, that was my only point. Nobody's complaining oh, about that. I can. I'm the biggest offender of that. I, I'll, I'm will i going to start sending pictures to Mr. Gilberto of all the... No, I'm just kidding. No, but so in terms of the, the, the letters that we received, it seems pretty clear that this is a concern for Mr. Lohr's and um, other residents in terms of a revamping of the trash program and the trash fee that's charged. And so there was some, uh, you know, he did implore the finance committee to take a look at the legality of it. However, there was, that's really not their purview to look at the legality of it. And he's presented to us previously, the distinction between um, the fee paying paying for residence removal and the fee associated with removal of municipal and school buildings. And I think I do know in talking with the town administrator that that amount that that cost is kind of a nominal in comparison to the entire program. And I don't know if you want to share that information, Mr. Gilberto, but I, I think that helps frame it in terms of, you know, a kind of a revamping or a repealing or a, you know, modification to it. Yes, Madam Chair, I mean, really, you know, for the edification of the board and for the community, you know, what we're doing is just, you know, looking to better understand the parameters for what the fee um, can be used to pay for. And, um, you know, there was uh, some guidance that was given to us um, by, um, by a resident, you know, from the Department of Revenue that we're looking at closely and that we are reviewing with town council. Um, you know, we're, we're really focused on that and making sure that, that you know, that, that we are, are aligned to the extent possible. You know, and just, you know, candidly, as, I, as you mentioned, you know, if, if there needed to be changes to it, you know, there, there likely will be an impact. There will be, um, you know, a, 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 an impact on municipal operating budget and potentially on the school operating budget as well that we just need to be prepared for. And, you know, you know I, I, I did indicate at the meeting where the fee was set for fiscal year 2022 that we intended to look at it over the course of fiscal year 2022 for potential changes in 2023. But um, you know we've received, uh, and I know you have all received quite a bit of feedback since then that is expressing an urgency that's faster than that. So we're trying to respond to that. Um, you know there there is a, I think a pretty steady history of the fee being set to address all of the costs associated with sanitation. Um, and we've carried that forward over the years, um, but you know we're being being asked to look at at it and look into it, and, and that is what we're doing. Um, but you know, not we're not at the point where we could responsibly say to you, you need to make a change to the program at this in, to this dollar amount because it's just a number of remaining unanswered questions. But we're committed to answering those questions. Yeah, I think that's. I mean, I think that's really. All I'm asking for is, you know, you get someone like Tony LaRue who's, you know, he wants to contribute and, you know, all we have to say is we're working on it, you know, and thanks for your information. I mean, it, you know, that's because he's, I mean, he's done a lot of work to write it up. And so I, thank you for doing that. You know? I'm happy to respond to him as well on behalf of the board, just to let him know that, you know, this is where I know, I know a number of you have, have responded to him individually. So, um, but I'm happy to do so as well. That'd be great. Thank you. Mrs. Trudeau? And uh, one thing, Rich, thank you actually for bringing up Carpenter Drop. I was going to save my commentary for the 24th, but I might as well. So after budget season, um, I'm in that working group. And actually, Rich, just one correction. It's actually the working group that put out that, like, those feelers, like, you know, during that meeting, just to get an idea. It's not the CPC yet. However, we did determine that after budget season, because there was no way we're going to put another thing on the 24th, maybe in that June meeting. I think it is at the point where the first, uh, we should have it on the agenda for the first time as a select board, having a conversation about Carpenter Drive because the RFP and all the movement to get it on an October warrant, if it is warranted, no pun intended. I, I think it is something where at this point, the working group does feel that the select board has to get involved. I just didn't mention it. I was gonna save it for the next one, but you know, I might as well piggyback off your comments. So thank you for bringing it up. 
And then also just my small opinion on the, on the trash and the separation. My question always was, it doesn't have to be answered now, but if we separate the municipal or school trash budget, whatever that is, and bill it a different way, isn't it still sand in the sandbox? It's not like we can tell Reading, hey, can you pay the North Reading school trash bill? Like, so my thing is that I feel like we have to just be very honest and transparent to all the residents that if we remove it from this part of the sheet and put it somewhere else, and again, I'm not an expert of town budget, but one way or the other, this has to get paid. So my thing is that, I mean, I don't know if we can just, if the idea is that we can just build people who have like kids in the school system for the, for the school trash, I don't know. I mean, I just, I've been thinking about this and the point is this, that we can separate the whatever it's gonna cost it's going to get billed either way and everyone in the town is going to pick up, pick it up. So, I mean, if it just semantics of it, like, you know, just how we're wording it, I, I just, I've never understood clearly how we're going to separate town hall and the batches, uh, you know, dumpster fee and somehow, how does that get paid? Is, is there any difference? So if we're just, I'm just saying, if we go through this whole exercise, just to recategorize things that still have to get paid by everybody in the town, I just don't understand where the savings come from. Okay, Mr. O'Leary. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be any, there's not going to be any savings. The cost is what it is. It's just a question of who's picking up the tab for it. And right now, what's being um, put forth for consideration is, you know, a fairness issue where those that participate and pay for the trash, you know, and again, the, the small users versus the larger users, you know, the, the one bag a week versus the four barrels a week is the fairness issue. And then who's really picking up the tab for it. And it, it's the people who are paying the fees, the vast majority. We do subsidize a portion of the sanitation budget through general government, but the vast majority of it is fee-based and it's only those. So it's a small user, again, are, are paying the bulk of, of the cost for everybody else for the larger uses, including us. So including us meaning general government and schools. So I, again, I, it is, it's Loray, Tony Loray, Loray. Um, oh, I said Laura, uh, Yeah, yeah, yes, Loray. But, but, he, yeah, right. You know, he's raised some very good and legitimate points, and I think it's, it warrants uh, some close consideration in short order, not over a, a whole year here, as to, you know, and again, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. There's 351 other cities and towns around here that are doing things. And, uh, you know, I, I think it, fairness is a, is a big issue. And again, what I've been hearing from people um, is mostly that. And I've been hearing mostly from people who are, who are small users, you know, and living next door to large users and they just don't think it's fair. Why am I paying the same amount, you know? So anyway, um, but the, right. you know, to the question of Vincenzo, it's like, you know, if we take that, those portions out and put it in the general government and put it in the tax bill, then everybody's sharing in the cost of taking care of general government and school department trash, right? As opposed to putting it on the, mm -hmm. the fee-based users, so. Yeah, I don't think billing billing the school or billing the users of the school for the trash removal is going to get a lot of trash. It just, it, it just becomes another fixed cost. Right, it's a fixed cost, it's but also we have other fixed costs for specific segments of our population, and we're not saying, well, I don't benefit because you have a senior senior center, and I don't I don't benefit because I don't you know, my family doesn't benefit for the use of that or the other. And you could stop parsing these things out, but one hand washes the other and two hands wash the face, or as Mr. Vincenzo, Mr. Studo says, it's all sand in the sandbox. It's gonna come, come from somewhere, you know? I think the only distinction is here, we're assessing a fee for this. And that's really why Mr. Loray's issues should at least be addressed or clarified in, in that we're not paying, you know, it's it's an $800,000 tab and we're not paying $700,000 to remove school and town and the rest is going towards residential removal. It's a minuscule amount in comparison to the, the cost of the service to everybody. So I think those are the types of things that need to be clarified so people can have more understanding of that. So, um, all I think well if we're all done with that topic we can move on to sidewalk snow removal on Main Street 
Just kidding. With <laughs> <laughs> potholes. <laughs> oh, I know. Do we have a motion to adjourn? It's, yeah. it's yeah. 11. Could, could I just, just make a comment? They'll be poor, just under all the new business. And again, I'd just like to again, oh, thank, okay. you just you know, thank the voters again for uh, you know, re-electing myself and yourself, uh, Mrs. Magnapelli, to another three-year term. And I, and I think the response of the community was appropriate, uh, given the circumstances that were presented to them. Um, you know, for that, I'm, I'm extremely grateful. And I look forward to uh, working with my colleagues here and uh, the newly reinstated and reelected uh, chair, vice chair, and, and clerk. Uh, clerk. 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 Yeah, for the <laughs> upcoming year and the upcoming term. And again, just want to express my gratitude and appreciation. And uh, here, here. That's it. Okay. Motion to it. Oh boy. I just want to congratulate the two of you for. for Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you. All right, motion to adjourn. I was trying to get us done by before 11, but that didn't work. Uh, motion to adjourn. I'll second that too. Second I, I keep seconding things, so it's easier for Mr. Gilberto just to I, I, you know, you, you know. You, A lot easier. <laughs> no questions. That's uh, true. One second of that. All right, so motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Strudel. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. And uh, we saw you say aye, but we couldn't hear you. And Mania Pelli is aye. All right. Have a good rest of your evening, folks. Good night. <laughs>